match of NYU versus Johns Hopkins University. Delta, you ready? Yeah, super ready. Uh, battle of the two and one. So we're in that part of the season now. Five and one makes the playoffs. Four and two does not. Mm -hmm. So all the games from here on out, high pressure. It's win or go home, basically. So yeah, it should be a good match. Yep, you got to run perfect from here on out. Hopefully NYU will have no problem taking down Johns Hopkins. So far, how have the two teams looked? Well, I mean, both two and one, so not too bad. Uh, Johns Hopkins last week, uh, we'd like to say thank you for taking out Columbia. Uh, definitely appreciate What's that. What's Columbia's record now? Uh, they, I believe, are also two and one. Oh. So, uh, lots of spice. Over. Yeah, we might we might even see them in a later round. Uh, would love that. Uh, NYU, their one loss coming in a really closely contested three games against Penn State two weeks ago. Uh, hard fought game. Penn State sitting at three and zero. So. Definitely one of the better teams in the East this year. And uh, tough to see that one go, but would love a chance to get back at them in the playoffs. Yeah, we, we, we had the pleasure of being able to broadcast that match. That was Some of the best league I've yeah, ever watched. It was, was fantastic, phenomenal. yes. Okay, well, I assume any moment now we're going to be heading towards draft. Yeah. Um, how, about, uh, how about champion picks to think about? Obviously, uh, you know, Loki on, 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 on his talon, but I don't know if we'll see that today. So a couple of things I'd like to look out for. Uh, Extramatic has played Kaisa to perfection mm -hmm. every match so far this year. Uh, it's been banned out a few times, which is totally reasonable considering the state of Kaisa. But he's got a, like something like a 6 KDA on the champion. or something. I don't have actually the exact number, but something like that. Um, so we'd love to see him either get that. I would not be surprised if it's banned away. But hopefully we'll see some of that Kaisa. The other thing on the other side, uh, a couple of interesting picks. Uh, Cho'Gath for the top laner of Johns Hopkins has been a popular pick, and their support uh, has basically played Anivia every time that he can. Support? Yes. Really? Yes. That is his pick, is the Anivia support. Well, I mean, right now when I think about Anivia, I don't think you should be letting Anivia through draft, but right. not for support. Although, it doesn't sound terrible. No, I don't I mean, really know. Well, the, the, nope, it's a little hard. The thing that I think about is that the strength of Anivia, right, is the, your ability to just farm everything on the map. Yeah. I feel like his support. Yeah. Oh, what, what do you think of uh, of uh, of fasting Senna with Anivia support? No, no, no. <laughs> you you're need not a tank for the Senna, right? Like you need yeah, some defensibility. Right. Uh, but speaking of the fasting Senna, it's a really popular, really powerful pick right now uh, amongst all competitive regions. Mm -hmm. uh, the Senna and Tom Kench. Really, it's Senna support. Like, let's be honest, yeah, it's yeah, Senna yeah, support yeah. and Tom Kench yep. taking the farm. Uh, but later game, Senna starts to take the farm. Uh, I saw an L LEC game where G two Reckless had. 1100 attack range after 260 souls on Senna. Yeah. Uh, so he was standing at mid tier two and auto wing mid tier three. I mean, I think currently a lot of pros are, are actually complaining about the state of Senna TK right now. Uh, well, it has 100% pick ban this week. So yep. that should give you an idea of the yep. state of where that pick is at. So um, definitely powerful. I don't know if we'll see it. It definitely takes some expertise to pull off. You have to really know how to play both of those champions mm -hmm. in conjunction. There's a lot going on. And your but support has to be able to farm. It, yeah, and if, but if you can make it happen, it's it's really strong. Yeah, I mean, right now, I think over in all League of Legends, uh, over all League of Legends is in a pretty pretty good state. I think it's pretty exciting. Um, but you know, we're ready to ready to jump into match. Here. I assume at some point production will let us know what the state is on that. Okay, yeah, um, just I, waiting on everyone to get ready. Yeah, um, look at us for a few more are there days. are there uh, are there any th things you want to see today? I know I want to see Extramatic just pop off again. That's been an absolute I, joy. I would say it's fair. So we're at the uh, now uh, match four of six of the regular mm -hmm. season. So we're over the halfway point, and I think it'd be fair to say that Extramatic has been the the MVP so far of NYU. Uh, really, just putting on a show. Really exceptional. I would say especially these team fight positionings. Uh, he's so good at not dying, uh, which is. I mean, obviously, so important as an AD carry. So, okay, looks well, like we're about to head into draft here. Uh, Johns Hopkins University and New York University. It will be uh, the game one. NYU over here on the blue side. In the top lane, we have Selenic, Douch, <laughs> and then Loki Parkour. And the bot lane is Extramatic and Deweed. For Johns Hopkins, their top laners Flying yeah, Sledge, yeah. their gun leaders Rixie, their mid laners Night Song, and their bottom lane consists of Waterfrog and Pyman. So far, starting with the bands of Rek'Sai, Gragas, Talon, and Karthus. The Talon makes sense. The Gragas Karthus makes well. sense, but the uh... Rek'Sai, no Rek'Sai. So really? Rek'Sai is a pick that Rixie has played a lot. Interesting. Uh, Gragas and Rek'Sai are the only two junglers he's played so far, actually. So uh, he's had a lot of success so far on these champions, uh, and it will be the Lilia as the final ban away from Doubt. 
And your favorite champion looks like it might be the first pick here for NYU, the Lulu. Uh, they're going to decide to go oh, with Hecarim, which I think is a pretty solid pick as well. I think that uh, independent of my incredible bias for the ball, I think Lulu is very strong. Very strong. I, I yeah, absolutely. Strong. Um, I don't love the first pick of it, though. I don't either, um, because picking that kind of signals was Okay, going. so okay. NYU had like the first that. pick. They decided, they opted to give Doubt the Hecarim which is, as far as I know, his favorite champion to play right now. Uh, instead of giving Extramatic his favorite Kai'Sa, they decide to let that one go through. I'm sure that they expected it to go to Johns Hopkins if they don't pick it first. Yep. Uh, but they decide, you know what? We'd rather take the Hecarim here, well, give them I mean, the Kai'Sa, and then play around it. Good heads up play here from Johns Hopkins. This is a, you know, this is something that you want to do in draft as often as you're allowed to. Pick a champion that's also a bent. Galio being followed up here. We can see that headed to mid lane or to support. Galio, great pair with Kaisa down in the bot lane. And a Dewey special as well. That's He's true. played a lot of the Galio this year so far. Uh, so another opportunity for Johns Hopkins. You know, what, we talk about it a lot. One of the way you can get more bans, quote unquote, mm -hmm. is by picking away your opponent's champions. Yes, and, exactly. Uh, definitely looks like they're going to go with that. The Senna is going to be the pickup for Doubt here. Uh, obviously not Doubt playing it, although that would be fun. That would be sick. Uh, but... Probably going to go to Extramatic. Uh, doesn't have to, yep. but would be pretty pretty unusual at this point for it to be played by so the, the worry that i have here is that if you don't pick well actually i mean they've already picked their bot lane unless they want to flex galio into mid lane but uh unless you know that that galio is going to the support if you don't pick your support here yeah there you can see if you didn't pick your support here um they start banning stuff away exactly and well, then you know and, th and then they could galio pick another tank support although i think there's maybe an argument here if if you're feeling lucky to not picking the support and hoping they ban the Tom Kench because I don't think they wanted to play the Tom really? Kench here. I think they wanted to play the Nautilus or the Thresh. Sure. And then you get a free ban away. I don't know if it's worth doing, but could be interesting. And I mean, it's a little, it, it's a little scary. So yeah. here we can see Udir being picked right, up. So... That's going to be going to it's going to be going to Rixie. Um, I'm going to say this: a year ago, we thought Udir was dead in the water, uh, wouldn't be viable anymore, too outdated of a design, and Take it away. So the, the first thing I'd like to say about Udir is that he is currently 100% pick ban in every major competitive region in the world, uh, which is ridiculous. Yeah. And that's a lot more bans than picks because he also has a 75% win rate. So yeah. he's really, really strong. He is absolutely busted right now. They even tried to uh, nerf him a little bit in 11.3. Going to be honest, didn't really do a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, he's definitely on the block for some more nerfs yep. in 11.4. Yep. But until then, a priority pick, going to be the Udir. Pretty decent into Hecarim. I actually wouldn't say that that's one of Udir's more favorable matchups. I think that of the champions that NYU could have seen here, uh, they're not actually as worried about the Udir as they would have been about some other things, yep. but still a really powerful pick and uh, a good pickup for Johns Hopkins. In our bands here, we saw Riven hit the dust as well as Cho'Gath and Seraphine. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, Flying Sledge, a huge fan of the Cho'Gath. Yeah, he's played um, it a lot. So. You know, pretty normal to see that go away. Riven, I'm a little bit puzzled about Seraphine. I'm not. Riven was actually, I mean, Riven, Selenic does sure. have a Riven yes, game this yes. year. Yeah. I don't yep. think he'll play it again. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think that's worth Seraphine right now, so busted. Oh my God. This champion yeah. is so, so, so broken. Um, And then you can see getting taken off the board finally is the Mordekaiser. It's a bit of a head scratcher actually to ban Seraphine at this point, unless. They think that Loki's think Loki play could it. play it, but it's not really his style. So we'll see. I mean, when you have counter pick available for mid lane and they pick a Seraphine, that's really, really scary. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so Water Frog here picking up the Shen. That'll go top lane. So we're waiting on a, a mid laner and a top laner here. Oh boy, okay. Camille. Yeah, Woo. so we've seen the Camille already from Selenic a few times. Definitely has some proficiency on this champion, and that's a really powerful pick at the moment. I think in organized 5v5, Camille is busted. Camille's great. Camille yeah. is so, so strong in the 5v5. It is going to be the blind pick mid later for Loki Parkour, but he has shown that he is not afraid of anything, even when he probably should be. Yep. So yep. I don't think he cares yep. all that much. Oh, boy. Ooh, oh, boy. Interesting. Hey, do you remember when Lissandra just, like, was the only mid laner that you saw for, like, two and a half seasons? Yeah. Yeah, well, it Good is going to be Lissandra, a champion that I would say has one of the biggest uh, upgrades to competitive 5v5 from solo queue, uh, much more powerful in the 5v5. Uh, 
format than he is she is in the solo queue format just because she requires a lot of team play in order to really make it work so i really like this pick though i think that it's yeah, a really I, powerful I, I think it's control phenomenal. Ooh, okay and then finally okay we see the lucian being the last pick here for johns hopkins I'd like to remind everybody that in between pick and ban uh of course there is a delay to begin with but in addition to that uh we have a even longer delay yeah, we're we have to wait here. another two okay, minutes because we're casting it. So, so let's talk about minutes. these comps for a minute. Yeah, okay. So um, I'm going to start by saying that I, I like NYU's draft, but a lot of the reason that I like their draft is because I think it's cool. So I don't, I don't know if I can speak exactly to its strength, but the thing that I know um, with Johns Hopkins is their lack of range. Lack of range, lack of magic damage. Yeah. I'm a little worried yeah. about... The ability of this Nautilus, this Hecarim, and this Camille to just say, okay, I'll buy an armor item second, and now you don't get to play the game. I mean, and, and Lissandra, what's what's that component of uh, Zanya's when you farm? Seeker's Arm Guard. Yeah, she can just buy first. first she wants, seekers. I mean, she wants Seeker's Arm Guard into an AP matchup. Yeah. Like, you buy the Zanya's anyway. Yep, yep, yep. So I, I'm definitely a little worried about that. You get a little bit of magic damage yep. from, like, there's there's a little bit here and there. Yep. Like, you have some from the Udyr uh, on and off. You have some from the Kaisaw passive, I guess the Galio, but yep. like, I don't know. I guess I just, I'm worried. You mentioned the range thing. Yes, they have 280 carries and you'd think that would solve the range problem, but it kind of doesn't with Lucian Kaisa. Mm -hmm. Like they're still very short range. And when you have this Senna, you have the Nautilus hooks to worry about. You have the Lissandra, yep. not to mention the gap closing potential of the Hecarim and the, the Camille here. Yep. I, I agree. I am a little worried about their comp. Well, the the thing, the other thing that worries me about Johns Hopkins, right, is you know if you look at uh, if you look at Galio and Shen, right, these are these are two great disengaging comps, disengaging champions, right? You know this is where you just want to kite and kite and kite, yeah. um, and then you've got Kaisa, which is you know one of the best dive ADCs, right? Um, so it's it's a little bit backwards. I mean, in addition to you know Lucian and Udir, which are also you know good for skirmishing and diving, but when you look at NYU's comp. Um, they're like way better at diving, and then when you do, they get to peel you, or they, they get to peel their own champions with a uh, with Nautilus and Lissandra. Um, in addition to that, I think their range is better because of the Senna and the Lissandra. They've got a really, really strong front line for the Senna to just sit back. Um, Loki here picking the uh, Lissandra, phenomenal, phenomenal pick. Yeah, I, I, I really I'm a like huge this. fan of it, um, and I don't think Lucian's that good into it. I imagine Lucian's bad. I mean, I wouldn't say that. I, I mean, he's look, able to look, look he's safely. But... Yeah, and you have priority landing phase, but you know, it's Lucian mid lane. Right? Like, like when when does he not have mid lane priority? Exactly. Um, but you know, I, the the one thing that I can really hand Johns Hopkins here is that, uh, you know, before second item, they have a lot of priority. Yes. They. I mean, you I know, they're they're that. so mobile with Shannon Galio's globals. Um, you know, Kaisa is online a lot faster than Senna is. Um, so for, for those reasons, I think that, you know, there's, there's certainly some early game edge to be, to be handed here to Johns Hopkins, but once the early game is over, it is a bit of a yikes to put it, uh, to put it, to put it softly. Well, th the other thing too is, man, like this bot lane, you talk about, we talk a lot about the, the prio that Kaisa mm -hmm. has in the meta right now. I think of the champions you want to pick into it, Senna's top of the list. And the reason yeah. why is not only do you have, are you able to take advantage of Kaisa's short range for to carry, mm -hmm. Kaisa has what I would call quasi-mobility yep. in the sense that she has a speed up with her E that late game can be very powerful positioning around team fights. Well, and, and also in early game can as well. Yes, but it's not actually an ability that lets you dodge Senna yeah, W. Exactly. And the reason yeah. why is because Senna W as a projectile uh, can't be dodged because of the charge time on Kaisa E. Yep, so when correct. you have to charge up Kaisa E in order to switch over, it, it's not possible to dodge the Senna W. So that I think the Senna has a lot of ability to control this lane in a way that obviously Senna is not going to be you know the early game bully, yep. but does negate some of the Kaisa pressure that you see in these early games, uh, and I think could be really powerful in the bot lane. So really interesting comp here for both sides. I definitely agree that NYU has the draft advantage mm -hmm. here, but as usual, it comes down to execution. And I also wonder if it's going to be, as usual, 
Dragon Fryo. We talked about it so much. Udyr is very good at this Dragon Fryo thing. So is Hecarim. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of matches, actually, where I think we've had one jungler that's a lot better at it yep. than the other. Yep. This one doesn't feel that way. So yep. I'm gonna see. we're going to see a lot of deep warding. We're going to see fights around Scuttlecrab. Yep. We're going to see Dragon Pressure. Yep. I think we're going to have a good game. Well, everybody, thank you for joining us again here in the bedroom studio before we head onto the Rift. Um, this is this is going to be exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm quite ready for this one. Well, and I'm excited for the bot lane, too, because yeah. if you guys couldn't tell, you can tell what role I made. I'm an AD carry main. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I mean that one is not. Well, that one's not really what, an AD carry. When I bought him, he was. Yeah, when you bought. When him, I he bought was. that poster, Corky was definitely still an AD carry made. So um, the the thing that I also wanted to note about the uh, the Senna lane down in the bot lane is, you know, when you're playing Senna, the assumption is I'm going to do nothing, right? Like you're okay with that. Yeah. And when that's the case into any lane, when you play against you know a lane that has a lot of priority, you're like whatever they would have it anyways like you know this this is this isn't going to yeah. change anything yeah. um so i imagine we're going to see first drake headed in the direction of Jones hopkins i just don't really know what there is to be done about there's that. also this i would just like to point out there's this really funny interaction in this lane where uh galio taunting nautilus just results in galio getting rooted mm -hmm. uh which is really yeah, funny oh yeah that is that is <laughs> so yeah, it's just like passive so nautilus just i mean it's such a good pick here because he just sits around and they just try to walk up and he just says no and well, he doesn't get punished and and in addition to that i mean you know like you said kaiso's mobility ability late game is actually very helpful right for repositioning it cannot reposition you through a nautilus ult. right like that doesn't work it can make you move farther away yeah, may, yeah but you will still get knocked. you will off. still get knocked off. so i i think that's actually i think that's a solid pick here yeah so um, we should be in the game any minute now uh, once again, it will be NYU on the blue side, Johns Hopkins on the red side, and yeah, game one of the three. Super I, excited. I want to see Selenic pop off on Camille. I love, like, is Camille busted? He's good. I don't think we talk about, enough about Selenic. Uh, I do wonder, yeah. you know, he, he's been really exceptional into these weak side lanes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just really, really done a great job. You know, when, when we don't talk about him, uh, it's almost a good thing, right? Because he's not. Yep. Uh, well, here we are loaded onto the rift. Side. We have NYU, Selenic, and his Camille up in the top lane. Okay, Ooh. so really quickly, uh, as as is become the norm in all competitive League of Legends, it is an LCK special, but we are making it our own here in Seawall. We are going to start the game with a pause. Uh, right. Yes. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll have to do the the rift intro here again in a moment. Um, can we cast or curse it into into its uh, starting up again? Man, well, this we're going to be gonna paused take... for two hours. Yeah, this pause uh, going to be for two hours. Please stick around for two hours and watch us uh, talk to us. Feel free. Um, I, I I I didn't actually look into whether or not the answer to this was true. I woke up and uh, we're we're basketball fans. I woke up and uh, I think there's a solid chance that the Nuggets won off. Goaltending? No, it's okay. So I okay, think, is I it think not what happened? That they did get a three pointer off of a goaltending call, but it was not the game. Okay, okay, okay. However, they did only win by two. Well, that's that's what so, I know. I was like, therefore... was that a buzzer beater? Hmm, interesting. Hey, here's a fun know. fact, kids. Uh, you know, whenever you see a buzzer beater at the end of the game, you're always like, oh, that was the most important play. No, and if they made any other shot, it wouldn't have happened. Right. Um. So you know, uh, that's uh. That's uh, that's the same way. Um, okay, I think. Okay, once again we are back. This is great. Okay, on the red side we have Johns Hopkins in the top lane. We have Flying Sledge in the jungle. We have Rixie Nightstone in the mid lane. The bottom lane consists of Water Frog and Pyman. For your NYU Violets in the top lane we have Selenic. In the jungle we have Doubt Loki Parkour taking through the mid lane and your bottom lane. Holding it down, extramatic into weed. Uh, you know, just normal, normal positioning here. No invades, which we saw just like yes. non-stop recently. The one thing I would like to point out really quickly is from a summoner spell perspective, NYU is currently two to one in the teleport uh -huh. category, which definitely could become but relevant. They're four to five in the flash department. Uh okay. True. <laughs> uh yeah, so NYU is uh, going to have teleport advantage. Lucian opting for the cleanse Maybe as an alternative here. Um, so we will see if that ends up playing. We talked about dragons being important. Teleports can definitely be a big impact on those dragon fights. 
it's been so cool to see the evolution of summer spell usage. Um, you know, I, I remember when all ADCs took Ignite. Yeah. That was a thing that happened for a long yeah. time. You take Ignite, there weren't uh, there weren't good starting items. Well, because so Heal was like 25% as effective as yeah. it is now. Like, it didn't mean anything. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. There was a season where every AD carry took Barrier. All right, so assuming these junglers are going for full clears, I'll set the over under for Doubt's clear at uh, three fifteen and a half. Take the over under. under. Take the under. Yeah. Okay, I'll actually set the same one, and it looks like they are under. under. Cool. You'll take the under. Okay. I think both. Of, so uh, let me really quickly talk about Rixie. Rixie is statistically the best player on John Hopkins. Sure. He is uh, finished last year Masters 600 LP. Wow. Uh, and is already back in Masters this season. Wow. Which I would like to point out is impressive, partially because players such as Doublelift are not. Uh, a lot of pro players actually haven't made it yep, back to yep, Masters yep. yet. And he has. So, well, I mean, yeah, the, the, the title on Doublelift stream every single day so far has been Surely this is the day yes. that I get Masters. Uh, so he has flirted, actually. So he's already been challenger a couple of times. Oh, Rixie wow. Has, so really, Love really it. strong jungler here. I'd like uh, to remind everybody that uh, uh, Loki was uh, Grandmaster. So. Yeah, and Loki was the number one talent. Yeah, that's, right, that's right. Which is why that ban came out. Uh, but we will see these okay. junglers with the full clear. So I think you're right. Yeah, I think they're both going to hit the under here. Looks like they should both be at their Scuttlecrab on spawn, which is exactly what you look for. Actually, Rixie is a little slow. Uh, and you can tell that nothing is happening in the side lanes when we're talking about jungler clear times. And this is one thing that Hector gets to do that uh, Rudeer doesn't, which yep. is double leash yep. the two yep. camps here at the end and clear both of them simultaneously. Okay, so, so Doubt's going to be, gonna be way on. Okay, I, yeah, I think Rixie, Rixie will get there too. Rixie, Rixie has smite Yeah, he has well. a smite. Okay, well, yeah, I, I don't think he's going to use it. Uh, oh, oh, well. okay. oh, he will get there. Wow, he hit it. <laughs> so there you go, just mirroring each other but Rixie now decided to ignore the scuttle card for just a moment barreling towards the bot lane i guess he knew that there was no vision there and he also knew that hecarim started on the opposite side so he didn't yep. have to worry about there yep. being a contest exactly. hecarim's gonna go just make sure that everything is in order okay Ooh, the double punt the double punt lands here and udir gets the stun onto teleport the from lissandra we see the flash get used out here but the teleport from lissandra arrives and now shen, he's, the teleport from shen is late water frog's gonna go down that's what Rixie, Rixie now so low. So low. Loki oh. over, gets it. And that will be 2-0 in the direction of NYU. So wow. To hunting, but I, I think he's just going to back off. Enormous lead going over to NYU here at four minutes into the game. Great reaction. So Loki Parkour there got the teleport down, and it was matched by Flying Sledge, but a solid like six or seven seconds late. Yeah. And the big thing that happened there is actually what Rixie died to was the fact that Lissandra was barely able to get an assist on the first kill, yep. meaning that the Lissandra passive, those ice clones yep. that explode, yep. got the kill onto Rixie too. So huge 2-0, early lead here for the Senna lane, which is absolutely massive if you're NYU. And Loki Parkour missed maybe a wave for that. Yep. So yep. a lot of lone summoners, huge TP disadvantage well, now. And, and you can see already Seeker's getting picked. Yeah, so the instant Seeker's Arm Guard back makes sense here for Loki Parkour. So I I, I actually think the, the lane that gets affected here the most is actually mid lane. I actually disagree. Really? Because look at this freeze now that Seletic just gets for free in top lane. Oh, okay. And Seletic still has TP. The, the two lanes that I was going But No, Seletic now has infinite pr prio top and still has the TP. So wow. he can freeze this, reset anytime he wants, yep. TP back, yep. and then keep freezing. Yeah. So this is, Shen is actually just locked this out of this really game. Scary. Yeah, because, the, and the problem now is that this Udyr needs to come help Sledge. Yes, absolutely. Um, if, 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 if Udyr doesn't address, um, if Udyr doesn't address this problem up in the top lane, Shen is well, going to get murdered. We've suddenly got this problem now. We talk about the jungle idiom always about playing through your strong lanes. Mm -hmm. What do you do if you don't have it? And that is sort of what we're seeing here. We are seeing a farm lead for Lucian, but right now, I mean, there's just getting, you know, there's so much pressure on this Camille anyway. And now with the Camille having this CS advantage, having the lane dominance that he does right now, Selenic really doing a good job. And he's got six. And okay. A phenomenal weight on the second half. Wall jump there, just gets a stun, and I think he's gonna force the Shen out of the lane. He's got a 20 farm advantage. 
Uh, I'd like to note to everybody, this is not a passing Senna, this is just a normal Senna. Okay, the, oh, taunt, tank buff, though. the taunt does land, but I think he might just be able to walk out. I think yeah. he might be tanking. Get out yeah. of this one. Again, more w wasted time from Rixie here, and while he's been spending so much time on this, can we look at top lane for just a second here? Um, up in the top lane, uh, <laughs> Sledge is just getting... Now, you see the Camille making her way down since Go the wave is pushed in. Head. Knight's Dawn here, I don't know if he's expecting it, and there is the stun into the ultimate, and that Knight's is blown. just that stun ult ult. Oh my god, I mean, the Camille Lissandra ultimate synergy, that's gross. Yeah, a little bit awkward on the layering, they did actually overlap into yeah. the duration, yeah. but even through the cleanse, the issue there is he blew cleanse at a time where there was two yeah. things affecting him, yeah. and it actually doesn't work. So you don't get completely freed from yep. the CC there, because there's two separate immobilized that are counting down, and you can only cleanse one of them. Interesting. See, I mean, I'm not a cleanse user. Yeah. I, I take I take one and a half summers. Right. Well, actually, probably like 1.75. Like, I take, I take, uh, I take half, it, half an ignite from a heal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly, and then ignite. Okay, so first dragon over here going That's to NYU. So big. This is This is a really gross lead for this point in the game, especially for the team that we said was, you know, likely to be weaker in the early game. Folks, if you're not used to watching 5v5 League of Legends, this is just something that happens. The team that is supposed to be scaling, when they get a lead, it's way, way, way worse. Yeah. So the thing also, we've watched a lot of NYU, obviously, we've been watching them all this season so far, mm -hmm. and I would like to just commend them on their composure. Yeah. They're letting Johns Hopkins make mistakes. Yep. And one thing I'd like to say is I looked a little bit at John's previous games. I looked at some of their recaps. Hold on, really fast. Another so brutal freeze. freeze. Okay, sorry, go oh ahead. Oh my gosh, this is just so hard for Flying Sledge. Doesn't have really any way to break this. And right now, so what they also, let me just take a quick side note from my side note on your side note, which is that Rixie is top lane and he's looking to break this freeze for Flying Sledge. And Loki Parkour instantly moves top because yep. he knows that that's the case yep. and denies this freeze being broken. Blue buff is going to be taken away though, which is a little bit unfortunate. I think the Hecarim could probably just match it though if he finds out that it disappears. Okay, Rixie here does, does manage to get it. I think he might just, okay, he decides to not offer the Drake, watch a reward. Um, but yeah, I mean, the top lane is just a slaughter right now. Yeah, it's so what I was going to say though about Johns Hopkins. They've had a couple of games. I watched some of their game uh, match against Columbia last week, which they did escape with a 2 1 victory, but it wasn't clean. And they made a lot of mistakes and forced a lot of fights. And I would like, I, I think that probably NYU, I'm sure they watched the games and I'm sure that they knew that. So really good job from them of letting the other team make the mistakes here and being really disciplined, really patient yep. and is paying off in the form of this early game late. Can we take a look at the souls on Senna? Yes. You don't get a mind. Senna soul second. time. How many souls does the Senna have? Seven. Okay. okay, that's about right. That's yeah, about where yeah. you want to be. So 20 is, usually the benchmark is 20 at 6. Yep, and, then, you and then, you know, right after, uh, or 20 at uh, 6, at level 6. At level 6. Okay, yes. they use minus 6 minutes. Okay, the hook and the flash there for Dewey to get away. I like that. There's no objective up. You don't need to worry about fighting. It's just that. Oh, no. And Shen can't even, like, really comfortably walk up to these. Like, he, he can take these range, but Selenic is just going to, like, keep putting on the pressure here. I, I mean, I'm, I like... Johns Hopkins' commitment to making Sledge play like weak, weak, weak side here is incredible. And I actually correct though. I actually I, agree. I think against Camille, really dangerous. It, it is dangerous. Really dangerous. But, but right, you were seeing this 25 farm lead here for the Camille. Yep. So and by the way, because the Udyr was able to pick up that blue buff, he can donate this one over to Lucian when I think it's probably what it is. Yeah, that's actually a that's a good point. And Unfortunately, there's going to be no donation for the Lissandra, which is a champion you really would like it yep. on. So we do see that 20 farm lane in the top lane, just about matched in the mid lane of the other direction. A little bit of a farm lead for the Kai'Sa here, but that's not actually too surprising in the Senna. Okay, so we starting off with a root, and once again, Udyr is downstairs. So is the horse going in. Both teleports from NYU. Both teleports this is fine, man. Huge. Now you're using the ult, and there's so much damage going out everywhere, but it is just all going oh on to my. Oh, oh, Selenic! Selenic going under tower for the double! The triple kill getting the ultimate off! Oh! And now the double kill going over to the horse and to the Camille. Again, another decisive victory for NYU down in the bot lane. Wow, so NYU, holy moly, their reaction time with that double teleport was instant. They were ready. They were waiting for that that Udyr to show. They've got the horse. They've got both teams. Can we look at top lane really fast? Suddenly, it's a five before, and uh, the, the the turret top lane. 
Okay. Okay, yeah. So by the way, for those who didn't notice, uh, Shen just missed an entire win. Yeah, so Shen doesn't get anything there. Yep. He burns his own stand United. It's a 5v4 bot lane that is a 4 for 0 for yep. NYU. Yep. And all of a sudden, NYU is out to a 4,000 gold lead at 11 minutes on this scaling cop, quote unquote. Three mythics completed. We've got the Divine Three Thunderers on completed. Seletic and on Doubt. We've got the Kraken Slayer already. Is Seletic just going to start, I mean, just hard punishing the Shen? And Lucian was just trapped in mid lane, just like, well, I, I guess I'll force in the wave. Because yeah. he's got yeah. no way to get yeah. bot lane. Yeah. So really great play there from NYU, knowing that they were going to try that. And yeah. I think you have to know that, that they were going to yeah. come down in the bot lane again. And 7-0 here, 4,000 gold lead. This is getting really scary for Johns Hopkins. Yeah, I mean, there's no teleports now. So in theory, if Johns Hopkins wants to make plays on the map, they have some time to do it right now. The dragon is coming up, but the problem is that if NYU groups for this dragon, Johns Hopkins just has to run. They're no longer they in a place where it. they can just rely on the number advantages that they think they have because yeah. Seletic is able, even without the teleport, to get bot lane so quickly yep. with that mobility that Camille possesses. Because yep. uh, that champion definitely needs mobility also. Yep. Uh, uh, yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we see a, a bit of a skirmish breaking out here in the top lane. Selenic starting out with the poke, manages to perfectly dodge two wow. pieces of CC, and now the they're whole team. They're gonna absolutely free, and then I think they can just watch. Well, it resets. <laughs> Honestly, if I'm then, I, I I just walk bot lane and just take the dragon. But they don't even have to worry about it. Yeah. Right? So like, I mean, Rixie's low enough to tell that he has to force off here, has to try and just go take his red buff. There's just not a ton that he can They're do. They're always gonna reset. Yeah, there's tons of resets coming out from Johns Hopkins. Yeah, I mean, there and everywhere, you can see the strength of the Camille, the top laner that has auto resets, true damage, one of the most broken passives in the game, a mobility ability that has a stun on the second half, an ultimate that has a stun and isolates. Uh, she has AOE healing. Yeah. Am I missing anything? Uh, probably. She, she has like every single thing that you could ascribe to an ability. Oh, Auto resets, mobility, stun, Her ult's slow. also an isolate. Yeah, well, and, and also it gives you iframes. So you, yeah, yeah, you have iframes, stun, slow, auto reset, healing. Okay, anyway, yeah, anyways. all of it. Okay, They're so. They're gonna get the second dragon here. NYU able to just run around and take whatever they want. 5,000 gold lead here. And what's Two crazy is when you have, zero. Yeah, when you have a, you know, when you have a double, a double dragon lead and the first two dragons, are cloud and mountain, you're guaranteed to be two dragons ahead for a soul that just automatically. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, I think Inferno here isn't even like the end of the world. Uh, sorry, excuse me, I don't think Mountain's bad yeah, either. Yeah. And the reason why is because they don't have any magic damage. None. So None. they're just going to stack armor anyway. Yeah. But obviously, the Infernal Soul is going to be really powerful on this long range comp that NYU has. It's going to be about a 24 minute soul, yep. which is so problematic. The scaling comp, we talk about, oh, they need to scale. No, they don't. They've already done it. Yep. They're already ahead in such a way that, you know, they've got mythics on, I'm sure when Lissandra backs here, she I was just going to say, actually, as well. Uh, Steve, can we look at, uh, at gold on champions? Steve, of course, is our wonderful production man. We would not be able to do any of this without him. Yep. 2,000 gold lead in the top lane, 1,000 in the jungle, 1,000 in the bot lane. And this Lucian, who is like the one beacon of hope as a lead goes, for John well, Hopkins okay. isn't even up. Wait, and, and the reason that, you know, maybe he's even a bit of a beacon of hope is because he just hasn't left. Well, he's he's basically gotten <laughs> to stay even in gold yeah. by virtue of doing literally nothing. Yeah. And so we will yeah. see the rocket belt come out. Lissandra will but, complete that. I mean, currently, you know, you have a four to one lead in, uh, currently you have a four to one lead in, in Mythics. Yeah. And Lucian's also forced here he actually really wants to be able to buy the Kraken Slayer and is forced to buy the slightly more defensive Gale Force. He actually, so Lucian is an interesting champion in that of the ADCs, quote unquote, he can buy any of the three <laughs> items, not all of them can. Uh, he could buy the shield though as well. So he hasn't gone for the full defensive build, but definitely would have rather built the Kraken Slayer here for that extra damage. Well, I mean, you know, Kr Kraken Slayer is good on Lucian. PTA is the best. Option. Well, right, he can trigger with his passive auto yeah. attacks, so able to get extra auto attacks. But now we see Selenic. It's going to be a, a clean swap of the top and bot lane, as without Dragon on the map, they'd rather put their more powerful pushing options towards that bottom lane so they can prepare for the next one. Yep. Uh, and right now, I mean, there's just nothing Johns Hopkins can do. Yeah, Selenic, they're doing a good job not actually taking aggro from the turret. And right now, I mean, you know, this is just. This is just what Camille gets to do, right? 
I yeah. mean, this champion is so busted. He's up 50 far. Yeah. At 16 minutes. Yep. This is just so yeah, brutal. It's 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 My uh, I'd like to note, congratulations to Night's Dawn for currently having more than uh, 10 CS a minute. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that actually is <laughs> that is but he's somehow not even up gold with it. No, nope. like, that's the crazy thing, is we are gonna see a little bit of a skirmish here in the top lane. Hot goes gets used, but down in the bot lane here, yeah, this is what I wanna watch. Watch is the turret will fall. Okay, so Back that's way. that's solo first turret going into the pocket of this Camille who is already so ahead. Yeah, really just brutal. And we're starting to see a problem here where Stand United isn't going to be relevant because Shen's just gonna die if he comes yep. into these fights. Yep. And that's about to be a really big problem. Well, and, and additionally, with what's what's a bit of an issue about the about the Camille and the Shen matchup is that Shen can't use Stan United like near Camille. Right. Uh, right. And, and furthermore, if he does, it's not just that he can't use it and go anywhere. No, he just dies. He just dies. He just, just gets, he gets canceled. It goes yeah. up. Yeah, and then he yeah. dies. Um, so, you know, now you just have to play. I mean, so passive. I mean, I you you would have to offer me ridiculously good odds to bet on to bet on Joe Tompkins here. I, yeah. This game is over. I would like to give a shout out also to our really good friend, John, who is our biggest fan in the chat always. Pointing out as well, if we are going to see a bit of a fight, as oh my god, yeah, I would Selenic like... is just going to assassinate the Camille. Glad that we get to point out, like, excuse me, the Kaisa. Yeah, glad that we get to point out the decoy is hanging around with us, but also we get to point out Selenic. Well, I'd like just like to say out. though, what decoy has pointed out is the fact that Hecarim has three full levels yeah. on the Udi, yeah. which is it's actually un unreal. Yeah, it's absurd. But, yep, the 8th kill getting yep. taken here. It is a 6,000 gold lead, dragging up in 30 seconds. Both teleports available for NYU, so Selena can just continue to pressure this tower. Honestly, they probably win the 4v5, but even if they don't, he's got the teleport. I so. mean, I, I think I think Selenic wins several subsets of one piece. Just straight up. Are there, I'm actually wondering if there's one piece. Is it? We will find out very shortly if he wins this one. As, Hyman! Oh my god! Hyman no, oh, he took like half. No, 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 off one Q. Yeah, as two going Qs to be a one is HP. Three. Okay, so Splendid Q now getting hot and does get. That's a lot of gold going into the pocket of Lucian. We just cast a curse. Yep, but Udir is top lane, and this is going to be a free soul point dragon here for NYU. So a little bit sad, but not even that big of a deal. As... I mean, do you care if you're Selenic? Your team's also no. Down. You go, good yeah. job, guys, yeah, and cool. move on it's with your good. life. Okay, so that is Soul Point at 18 minutes here. 24 minutes Soul is available for NYU. 20, yeah, 24 minutes Soul. Yeah. Um, you know, they're uh, they're yamming away here at this top turret, but I don't really know what that does because they're about to lose mid turret. This is not a trade that you want to make. No, mid turret's been gone. Oh, excuse mid me, mid turret's been gone. gone. Yeah. Um, so Senna now might get to do something very fun. That if they notice that that Raptor camp is up. Uh, you could have Loki take all of Raptor Camp and Senna gets like. Yeah, let's see. Let's do a Senna Soul check. If you don't. 44. Okay. Not okay. too bad. Not too bad at all. Okay. okay. Uh, so you actually, you look for these, like the way I, I, I like to think about it there. is you want 20 souls at level 6, uh -huh. 60 souls at level 11, uh -huh. and 120 at level 16. Okay. So sure. it, it's a little bit exponential. Yep. And on on path, on pace for that. Looks, looks comfortable. Uh, we're gonna see Loki Parkour take away this blue buff. Catching up to the Lucian in farm, actually. Still about 30 wow. down, but that's not that big of a deal. Lucian did get some shutdown gold, so going to have a little I mean, the, bit more of an advantage the major, now. The major issue in the game where I don't know, even with a... Like, so, I mean, even with, by the way, let's be really clear, the most gold in the game, I don't even know how strong Lucian Does is. Does Lucian have more gold than Camille? Yeah, he has the yeah he has the most gold in the game. Okay, so yeah. he has more than Camille. So he, even be, with the most gold in the game, I'm not sure how strong he is. I don't even know what he down does. Two thousand gold. So the issue with Lucian, right? The reason you pick Lucian mid is you want to get early pressure uh -huh. and then have Lucian roam into these side lanes because he's so good at doing so. Yeah, and he, Lucian has spent the entire game yep. completely irrelevant farming, which yep. is why he has so much farm. And granted, he does have a lot of farm, but it's an absurd. It's farm. not important farm. Like this farm isn't been meaningful because no. he's been irrelevant across the map. I mean, NYU is playing a comp that absolutely demolishes Johns Hopkins late game, and they have a 24-minute soul point soul dragon coming. Yeah, in. And, and in addition, right, you're like, okay, well, you know, Lucian sticking in mid lane got him, you know, a nice little farm lead. 
I don't, Imagine if he went top. Right. He could have prevented a 60 farm lead, or excuse me, a 56. Yeah. No, literally a 60 farm lead in top, right? So I also like to point out, though, that uh, the Herald, the last minute Herald was picked up. Oh, it's Loki. Okay, Loki, Loki yeah, here. really, really dies. Uses the Zanya as no, well. No, I left the Zanya. Like, oh, yeah, excuse me, not the Zanya. Uses There's Okay, now he uses Sentinel has been used as well. Does he get away here? Wow. He does not. Okay, so much being invested in that, but you see some running through GP. This is really, oh, really, no. really bad. A bit of a miscommunication here from NYU. Oh, no, and that's a two for zero plus one of them being a shutdown. And now, look under this Baron. Hopkins might just get the Baron here. Yeah, they actually, though... Yeah, so they are going to look under this Baron now, and I don't think that NYU is going to have anything to do about this, but definitely a bit of a misplay. We are going to see the Rift Herald summoned into that mid lane as Hecarim is going to try and take down the tier 2 turret. Doubt we'll get that one, but it is going to be the Baron picked up for the side of John Hawkins, so okay. exactly they needed a flag to here to go. Really, really. I don't know if they want to fight this. I guess they decide that they do. Waterfrog going to have the numbers the advantage. Ultimate. And Waterfrog again doing so much damage. The ultimate blown from the Galio. And uh, Knights on answering back. Okay. A wow. bit of a a bit of a spark of life. From yeah, so this is here. going to be the three for zero, but we are going to see the oh my tower as surely, surely is just going to take down objectives. So that is actually that's actually really bad for yeah. Josh Hopkins. Definitely, I would say worthwhile for Josh Hopkins here. They're going to get a ton of gold off of that Baron, as well as the crucial three kills. All of which were shutdowns. Uh -huh. So a lot of gold here for John. Actually, some, we, I, I, I want to correct you. Selenix for some reason is in that fight. Okay, so he yeah, okay. But still a couple of shutdowns. Yep. But three thousand gold leads, so they've cut that in half now. Yep. But Soul Point up here, actually, excuse me, Soul up here for NYU in one minute. And Johns Hopkins still definitely on the back foot, but that's exactly what they need. I mean, Shen has TB here. Something that if you wanted to what you can do is you can send. Well, actually, no, you just want a full fight. Excuse me, you don't want to. You, you don't really want to split this. I, I don't think that's right. Yeah, so they're going to defend this mid turret. 44 seconds here on the dragon. And yeah, just uh, it's a good fight there. Good job from Johns Hopkins finding a little bit of an advantage and able to to really make something happen. But they, they need to win this fight now too. And I don't think the NYU is going to make the same mistake twice. We also crucially see the Gwinsu's completed for yep. the Senna. A, lo a, a lot huge, of good items here. Thing. Uh, so item and a half in that last fight, and yep. they're a full two on most of their characters now. Yep. They're actually two and a half on this Lissandra. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, you can see both teams here posturing. This is a really, really important fight. Okay, and do we use it? Oh. On to Kaisa. The Kaisa going, taking so much damage. Oh, with that, though. Going too deep and gets shut down. Hyman here almost going down, and he does. This is Rixie oh, about Rixie to go down. Die, though. He's so low, and that is it. There That's are the no junglers They're available. You. Waterfrog gets hooked. Selenic now in the bot lane. Or, excuse me, all the way down in the bot lane and uses survivability wow. to stay alive. And that is a five for one ace. And NYU will be picking up the soul at so, 24 minutes. At first, it was like, oh, Doubt's so deep here. But he did a really good job. They burned everything, everything. on killing Hecarim. And then the back line of this of this NYU team, the Senna and the Camille, which was, I mean, okay, fine, back line, not really, but we're able to get into that fight yep. and take down Rixie, take down everyone. And this is going to be Infernal Soul. This is going to be the mid inhibitor. And Selenic here just pushing the tempo. I love it. Actually, isn't going to get it, but that's I think okay. that's okay. I think that's and, okay. And yeah, really this game just got monumentally difficult for yeah. Johns Hopkins. Yeah. All right, well, Selenic here just being a terrorist. <laughs> just the hook shot on the wall. Okay. Um, let's look at gold here, if you don't mind. Yeah, so big thing here. We've got about now out wow. to almost a 6,000 gold lead again. 2,000 Look at lane. that. The gold here for the Lucian, obviously still huge, but the Senna is getting there quickly. Camille 3, also gold really lead scary. In the top and yeah, this Shen has just been completely taken out of the game. Also... 1500 gold and a level almost two levels on the jungler yep let's do our soul check we talk about level 11 wanting to be a 60 souls for the senna senna has 63 so let's go well done okay. dramatic very scaled that's going to be 75 extra attack range for the yep. senna 60 is when you really start to talk about the senna having a lot of power yeah, in yeah, that yeah. that passive so yeah man. well you know people say look you know oh 
you know, Senna, NASA, so these champions, you know, they, they, you know, they infinitely scale. You don't care about that. The point is at a certain point, they're, they're, they're giving you gold value. They're giving you a uh, effective gold value from passives, but it's so absurd. Right. You don't care that it scales infinitely. Right. Like if Senna stopped getting souls at 80, it would still be amazing. Yes, I agree. And then, you know, on top of that, it keeps going. So, um, a little bit of a, a little bit of a break here. I mean, one thing I'd also like to point out is the farm difference in the jungle. Dot has done a really good job of keeping his camps down that Rixie hasn't done yeah. as well. And able to get to basically this free gold on the map there as bot side tier one will fall. Uh, it will be it's just yeah, just some more free gold around the map here. So Lennox here has to worry. He might be getting a little bit caught. He knows he's safe in that he's bush. Got good vision though. Yeah, they're jungle. they're they're so, doing just all right. Elder I mean, drag the next ob objective that is probably game ending, but we do have Baron spawning in about one minute. I think we're gonna get it. I, I, we're gonna get I think that's probably yeah. true. We got Baron in one minute with the inhib exposed here in the mid lane. Gonna be a last ditch fight from Johns Hopkins, but if NYU is able to secure this Baron and not get punished on the kill side for it, this could just be the game. Well, and, and what I like here from the Violets um, is that, you know, they they know that they can probably end right now. On right? the other side, they, yeah. they, they know that Infernal plus the position they're in right now is probably good enough, but they also know it's not going to get any better for Johns Hopkins. Right. It's it, it, they it can will, just they, they can just keep chipping away. Yeah, it's just exactly matter. what they're doing. They I mean, they're looking... And yeah, I mean Johns Hopkins, they're not I, they're not out of it, right? Yeah. A, a, a really good Baron fight goes their way. They get the Baron. They get some turrets here. Totally different game all of a sudden. But it's really it's, it's a game really of inches. Hard. They can't make a mistake. Well, NYU basically can afford to make it and why you can probably lose two or three points. well i don't know about that but the, the thing is right they can just keep doing this thing they're i mean they're not even going for baron yet they're just pushing in these lanes yep selenic is just unmatchable in this side lane well, and, and, and eventually eventually they're gonna have to address she can just endlessly split well i think we're already at that point right where she's well, just pushing they're gonna have to address it at some point i mean yeah. this is like you know what, what you need to actually send some help over there, right? Shen can't answer this. He's we do under see the Lucian on the way. Selenic is what's that? So we see a fight so in the top over lane in the top lane. lane. There should be. Oh my god! There's an advantage over in the top lane. Three, three. three. In the top lane. Deweed gets the hook, and Waterfrog is down. Rixie is about to go down as well. The Galio burn. Rixie on zero HP. Shen is here. The Senna goes to goes to oh, that's huge. Goes to go down. Night Sun has arrived, doing so much damage. Loki Parkour in the Zonias, and when he comes out, I think he's just going to be going down. The Lissandra ends wow. up getting killed. A four v three ends up going in the direction of Johns Hopkins and Udyr here chasing, and that that's is a the five ace. one ace. Unbelievable! And now they get Baron. Wow. So we talked about that. That is a huge, huge fight. We talked about them needing some fights to break their way. NYU just wasn't able to pull off the 4v3 dive. Senna getting a little bit caught out and did die there. So they're going to turn onto this Baron. I don't think there's anything NYU can do about it. Selenic does have the teleport and is up about now. So we'll see if that ends up being used aggressively. And this Baron is going to last through when Elder spawns. So when Elder yeah. spawns, they have to worry about this Elder Bunch. So, big fight, some gold closed out, but here's the thing. Johns Hopkins has to do that again, yep. and then maybe again after that. Yep. So, Elder up here, 55 seconds. All of NYU will be up for that fight. Yes, they do have Baron to contend with, but they still win the true 5v5, no problem. And right now, Johns Hopkins finding a crucial fight, but it isn't going to be enough on its own. We need to see them do that again and again and get this advantage back because Elder Dragon just ends the game on the spot. Yep. That is correct. And I I mean, I don't know if I would say it ends for both teams, but it might. It might. I mean, you know, depending on how clean Death the fight- Time getting on. On. Wins, that yeah. game just win on the field win right now. Okay. Selenic here. Posturing. I would like to see him get a good flank, actually. I think that would be a really, really Stop good Stop talking this much better grouped at the moment. Right yeah. So, look, at, look at where Lissandra is. Hardcore yeah. having to come into this fight a little bit late. And they don't have the posture to be able to contest this. I have a vision. Yeah, they they will contest it. I am yeah, confident well, excuse me, to, 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 you know, to feel really good about how they do it. Okay, well, you can see. Oh, my God. Johns Hopkins starting it up here. And they're trying to push them off. Here there goes the engage. The root lands on. Uh, Flying Sledge, Flying Sledge, taking so much damage now. Galliol. 
goes in. Selenic taking down Sledge in response. Now you're taking so much damage, but he manages to stay alive somehow. Selenic oh is just an absolute my. monster here. And extra dramatic, plus the violence managed to take down a triple kill going over to the Camille. And I think they are just going to ignore the Elder. Yep, they just decide, you know what? We don't need it. We got minions on the way. Yep. Got the wave. Inhibitor will fall. Death timers are plenty long. And barring something miraculous, this should just be the oh, game. I I, tw oh yeah, no, 20 is enough. Yeah, they've I, got I, 20 I yeah. with Camille, yeah. as, especially these towers will fall very, very quickly. Look at how far away Extra Medic can auto these turrets. Well, and as the first turret falls, and now the second turret falls with an early soul, an early lead, and just pretty excellent team fight play all throughout NYU Violets takes game one. Huge game from NYU, huge game from Solenic. Oh my god. Wow, did he destroy Woo! that game. Selenic, well, just an absolute monster. Well, something that I would like to, you know, we didn't talk about uh, Extra Matic all that much this game, but he played very well yep. as well. Welcome back to the Bedroom Studio. I'm still Hotfish. This is still Delta. An exciting game. A good, good win. Uh, I'm not going to ask you, player of the game, going over to Selenic. Absolutely yeah. dominant in lane everywhere on the map in the early game. Uh, I mean, he, he had a couple awkward deaths. Yeah, but... Yeah. Wasn't but, the end of the but world. they, NYU did a really good job also of managing to get some stuff off of those deaths in a way that was yeah, really good. Absolutely. All right. Okay. So um, I think we're going to go to break here any moment. Uh, I'm not sure we are going to go to break. Are we anymore, not? I believe. I believe we are actually going to hop right back in. We will probably take a quick break in between the draft pick and sure. the actual game starting. But I believe we're ready for just game two. With that five minute delay, they've been done for five minutes. And sure. Steve, we will head to back on into here, draft. Oh, I think there's a problem with my headset. Hold on. Uh, Hold Steve, on. Go ahead. Folks. Sorry. I didn't hear from production. Uh, we'll interview. I'd love to. Yes. Okay, cool. Sorry. Sorry for the. Uh, the communication that you are hearing one side of on stream, uh, but we will be getting back into draft uh, shortly. We'd also like to say that please stick around after the match is over. We will be talking to Mystery Van, who is the coach of NYU, Phenomenal. about the drafts. Uh, so always love to do that. I get to do my best LS impression, which is always a pleasure. Uh, oh, and boy. we will be heading back into draft here momentarily for All game right. two. Everybody's going to have to excuse me for just a moment here as I try and uh, reconnect my headset because I can't hear anything. So you okay. have to give me a moment. And here we are. Okay, back into draft. All right. <laughs> Okay, we're good. Okay, cool. here we are hopping in to draft on the blue side once again. I don't you will take blue side again. Rek'Sai, Talon, so the band so far staying the so same as they have been. Yep. Um, Poppy Bait is interesting. I don't know if he's here, but I would like to shout out uh, the Poppy one trick that is a friend of all of ours. Yeah. Poppying yeah, off yeah. in the NYU Intramurals. So the bands looks like they will be mostly identical. I wonder if NYU will donate over that that I saw again, or if they're just going to pick the hacker room again. I mean, the hack doubt really, I mean, he was, he we didn't great. talk about it, but he was yeah, very yeah. solid yeah. on the. Or if they're going to go something else. It looks like it will okay. be the hacker room again. I wonder if it will be the Kai saw response. I can't imagine you can let it go through. Uh, I would be surprised to see the Galio again, although it could definitely happen. Well, so far, we, okay, so far we have a yep, mirror be the Kai draft. Saw. Um, which, if you're, uh, if you're, if you're Jones Hopkins, how are okay, you? Okay, so they're gonna pick the Udyr a little bit okay. earlier this time. Interesting. Um, I don't know. I, I, Rixie's, uh, Rixie's Udyr didn't didn't seem like the move. I don't know. It definitely, but he got punished early. I think if they can maybe make it happen a little bit differently this time, uh, that would. It, I mean, it's obviously such a powerful pick. Looks like they're gonna prioritize the Galio on the bot side, so it will okay. be Senna Galio this time yeah. on the side of NYU. And we will see what, you know, now we have a decision for Johns Hopkins. Are they going to try and lean into this scaling a little more? Alistar, interesting. Okay. Interesting. Um, I mean, Alistar and, uh, Alistar and Udyr have decent 
early game. And Alistar can just Alistar Kai saw is plenty fine. Oh yeah. Definitely. Alistar just goes well with anything. One yeah. size fits all. Yeah. The ribbon ban again, man. I really hate that ribbon ban. Yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. Terrible. I think that's a really waste of a ban against Selenic, who doesn't have any interest. Okay. I mean, you're not you're not telling I mean, me they're going to leave up, up Camille here, yeah, right? Yeah, because what there's happens no is... Way. If, okay, there okay. you go. Yeah, I mean, there's... I, still... I, I still think it's bad, right? Like, why don't you just ban Camille and another relevant champion? Yeah. Um, okay, well... For especially since you have sorry especially since you have last pick yeah. if you want to just leave you can leave the last pick to the top laner mm -hmm. counter a, a riven if they end up picking it which sure. is unlikely to begin yeah. with but looks like it will be probably the top laner being picked here for johns hopkins i assume they will give that counter pick to mid lane again and it will be the malphite for flying sledge we will see what the answer for nyu is here well so malphite being picked for the top lane against again i guess they're gonna go for a bit of a Weak side top thing. Malphite, still really strong. Yep, very powerful. Champion pick. just doesn't take any damage. Um, however, there is still an issue. That it was the same issue last game. Currently, oh well, they have Hopkins some. Doesn't they have some magic damage from the Malphite? I mean, it's not, but it's more than you'd expect. Sure. Okay. But I agree. They do need to pick an AP mid laner here. It's going to be the Renekton for okay. Selenic. Another pick that he has some comfort okay. on. Absolutely. All right. So. Uh, NYU's composition finished here. Let's see what the counter pick in mid lane is against the Silas. Let's get into Silas. I, I have no idea how that. I have no uh, idea how the champion works. Range. Range. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Oh boy. Oh no. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is Smurf season here in the mid lane. Yone for Night's Dawn versus Loki Parkour on the Silas. This is going to be exciting. Let's talk about this quickly, Here's... and then we head to a break. Okay. First. Uh, oh, oh, cool. Okay, cool. So actually, we're going to interview Mystery Van in between. So that should be interesting. So we'll talk to him for a brief moment. Uh, but the thing I would like to say about this mid lane match, as uh, I expect them to trade it one more time. Oh, are they We're going to sit here and not talk about anything. Are they not? Okay. Hmm. Um, so my point, though, holds true. And I think I might suddenly understand why he decided to talk to us about his drafting. Is there is no way that Nightstone understands this matchup on Yone better than Loki Parkour does, considering that he played 700 games of Yone last season. Did he really? And he won tra ta talent, supposedly. Interesting. So I'm definitely a little bit worried. We're going to get Mystery Van in here. Uh, and we will talk to him a little bit about this draft. Hello. Hello. Mr. Van, welcome to the show. How are you? No, I'm doing pretty well. Thanks Clean for... Clean game one looked really good. Uh, the thing we talked about in our analysis of your draft was, first and foremost, uh, the concern we have about the lack of magic damage on the side of Johns Hopkins. And I think this is true going into the second game as well. Uh, what do you have to say about that and how you guys look to, uh, look to counter that with your drafting? Well, uh, we, we tend to play bruisers really well, and we really just wanted to pick strong solo lanes and take TP so we can target side lanes in, in team fights. Um, sure. I think they gave us really good Silas assaults in both of the uh, Red Alistar and the Malphite, so that was a pick we had been holding in case they decided to run those picks. Um, okay. So we were really excited about that. Um, and I think their draft just leaves... Like you said, it's very AD heavy. Um, Yone's hard to index into armor, so yeah, well, maybe we won't passive. over index. Uh, but... thing, also, talk to me a little bit about uh, unless unless something's wrong on our side, uh, the Renekton mid and Silas top. Yeah. Um, so with us, we we tend to treat the Renekton as a flex. Um, we like to run it mid and top. And Silas, uh, we we tend to run it mid, but they they gave us the Malphite, right? So yeah, that's that's obviously. a pretty free matchup. Um, Nothing we can like, nothing they can really do in that lane. So we just think uh, we double flex it, um, which is really good for blue four five. Um, so they can't get a free counter pick, and they picked Yon into Renekton, which is really good for us. Definitely looks like they weren't expecting it either, which is always helpful uh, when you when you kind of catch people by surprise. I don't think a lot of people think about the Silas as a flex as much these days. We saw it a lot more, I think, uh, in like season ten. Uh, early season 10, it was really popular. Yeah. Uh, but Selenic obviously has the mechanical proficiency. 
uh, to pop up on the champions. Beautiful Camille game from his last game, but so That's much right. pressure on the side lanes. And um, excited to see what he can do on the Silas. But uh, yeah, and the Senna pick, have you guys thought about, I'm curious if you guys have thought about the Senna Tom Kench thing at all. We we have. Um, the, the biggest issue is that we haven't practiced enough of the fasting Senna. So like, uh-huh. I, I don't, uh, like, and honestly, it's one of our ADC's better champions. So we just like to play it standard because we know the trading patterns better. Um, well, the on hit thing is so powerful right now. Anyway, it's so good. That, yeah, it's, it's so, so good. good. It, 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 honestly, in the it's borderline problematic. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's fine. I was going to uh, say, I did see in the earlier broadcast uh, that, um, I don't know if you watched LEC this weekend, but uh, G2 Reckless did have 1,100 range on Senna uh, with back Senna. He had 260 stacks, uh, which was a little bit ridiculous. So they, definitely they some interesting wrong. power, but... <laughs> yeah, Riot messed up. I don't, I don't know. I... I don't know how that's possible. Her attack speed's too high now, too. I, I don't, I don't get it. But so the the other question I have, uh, obviously, uh, the talent gets banned away a lot from low key parkour. Not a lot of surprises mm-hmm. there. Uh, but I noticed that the Evelyn has been up a lot. Obviously, it's you know a pick that really needs to make work. Will mm-hmm. we see the Evelyn for doubt this season? What's the uh, what's the plan? It, it's really draft dependent. Um, yeah. He, he has kind of mixed feelings about how it fits in the meta right now, even though it's really strong in solo queue. Um, he really needs squishy enemy team, so it really wouldn't have fit this game. Um, so, he can't, so he can't really pick it early either, and we tend right. to pick jungle in the first phase, if not first pick. Um, and well, with that, regards to the Talon the ban... As well. I, I noticed, sorry, sorry to interrupt again, but the Hecarim, no picking the Hecarim, prioritizing that. I know that Extramatic has loved the Kai'Saw, but... Deciding to give that one up in favor of this hacker in priority as well. That's been interesting these games. Yeah, the, the bigger thing is that they give us the Senna anyway. So sure. Senna's super good into Kaisa because it just nullifies Kaisa's laning phase. And um, Kaisa's really good at accelerating the game if she gets ahead in lane. And she just doesn't get to do that in a Senna lane. So, yeah, absolutely. I, and in my opinion, that it, she also gets outranged in team fights. It, it's just really hard for her to, to, to play the game into the Senna. So we get, we get the matchup we want. Um, we, we played them in a, a tournament at the end of last season, um, so we kind of saw the bans coming before they banned it. We knew the Karthus and Lilia were going to be banned. Uh-huh. And we were, it was the first Talon game we had ever gotten, so we were expecting the Talon ban. Champion pool, he, it just feels like he can slot into anything, so I would imagine when you guys see the jungle bans come out, you guys are pretty happy about it because it means you know they're not banning the Senna, they're not banning the Galio, and they're, I mean, it doesn't feel like that's uncomfortable on, on any of these champions. Yeah, I, we we tend to like try to narrow it to four picks at any time with with doubt because that way if they target ban them, it, there's still something we can play, and sure. that's why we favor blue side. We can always take that one thing. Yeah, um, uh, so and, my, and it's worked my, my out one, really well. Sorry, sorry, I, I keep interrupting. I think I think I'm <laughs> no worries, a little no bit worries. of a delay. The one question I have, the final question before we get into this game, uh, there's been a lot of priority on Udir into uh, pro play recently, especially we've seen that Udir be a very uh, contested pick. And I was just wondering, uh, do you guys just feel comfortable enough with this Hecarim into the Udyr matchup, uh, leaving that one up? Like, what, what's the thought process around that? Hecarim does what Udyr does, but better, in my opinion. Sure. <laughs> uh, and especially when we have Doubt, who full, he's a full clear jungler. He clears crazy fast. Um, we were actually taking bets on the full clear timing in the last, I, I uh, noticed. last game. I yeah. noticed. Yeah, and you took the right side. Took the <laughs> I'll have to say. Yeah. Um, so, so we like the Hecarim. And it's something we're really practiced on. We've been playing it for months now, so I, Udyr's okay, but we just have Pryo on the Hecarim. If we had to run Udyr, we could. So what do you think? Over under for this game on the Hecarim clear? What do you think is the uh, uh, <laughs> Under 310. <laughs> under 310. Okay, we'll be looking out for it. Uh, Mystery Van, coach of NYU Violet, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, absolutely. Oh, of pleasure. course. Uh, we'd love to get you back in here some other time, but uh, I believe we're about ready to head into game number two between NYU and Johns Hopkins University. NYU is, of course, up 1-0, and we will see you on the Rift. Mystery Van, thanks so much. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, no, I, I believe we are ready to head into the game, so we can just do that uh, as soon as I, I believe the five minutes is up or just about. So, uh, Cool. So we will head... No, we're all good. We are all set. Uh, and sorry, we we're just talking to production as usual. I, it's always weird to talk to production when I know that no one can hear him on stream. Uh, but back 
is back here with us. I am back, and we are on the Rift once again. NYU on the blue side, and Johns Hopkins on the red. Yeah, uh, a lot of the same picks from last game. Yeah, a lot of the same picks, and uh, but some some pretty crucial differences. The only, yeah, the only thing that changed was the solo lanes, and they changed, changed. Yes. Uh, Alistar as a difference here, as oh, opposed me, to the Nautilus me. as well. Uh, we'll see that flexed over, but. Uh, interesting also great interview extra matter excuse me uh, mystery band giving some great insight yep. into their thought process about uh, look senna's good at akaisa so if they just want to let us take the hacker of and the senna well, why not go for absolutely. it absolutely yeah. and hacker as he said quote is just udier but better uh yeah. you know with doubt on it i'm not sure i disagree and i mean you know the, the the point that he made um about you know the, the about doubts you know, Doubt's preference to be a full clear juggler. <laughs> Look, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, it's, there we, I can't hear you over all this cowbell. Yep. Uh, but yes. Okay. Well, as previously mentioned, um, this is going to be a fun one. Game two was plenty exciting. Um, so we are here in game two. Sorry, we're also laughing about the fact that uh, we're trying to unmute the stream uh, on our, our end so that we can hear the audio, and it's not wanting to. Okay, oh, there we, there we go. We figured it out. Okay, so here we see starting out. Okay, so remember, folks, um, the coach Mystery Van told us uh, we can bet on a under three ten clear. Let's Looking see if forward he, to it. let's see if he ends up being right. I hope he will. So interesting thing here is that the jugglers were on the same side of the map and they're actually starting on the opposite side yeah. of the jungle so we will see doubt moving towards this bot lane scuttle here as the first one as rixie moves towards this top lane scuttle so a little bit of a difference here in the well, pathing which know, could be is, really relevant this is this is pure speculation but i you know i i, I imagine that you know in between in the uh you know, talking about the the game in between Selenix like, no, I'm just smurfing, dude. I don't need help this fat following. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> also, the so one thing we talked about, too, in this interview with... with the Wait, hold coach. on. Uh, yes, can I help you? Knight, and, uh, Knight swapped a top lane. Yes. Okay. So we are seeing Knight, Knight Raven, uh, excuse me, Knight Dawn uh, against the Silas. But the reality is that matchup's not bad. But here we're going to see Parkour is going to swap also. Yeah. So NYU says, nice try, guys. We're yeah, willing to just keep thought. running around too. And what we're talking about is this Renekton mid lane matchup in Oh Kone. boy. It's not actually mid lane, it's top lane, but the matchup is unbelievably good for Renekton. Really? And the Silas matchup into Malphite also really favored for Silas. So Speaking of Silas, by the way, a lot of great ults. Man. Yeah. Right I mean, I mean, I, you can't take Udyr ult. Yeah, fine. you would think, oh, Udyr isn't that good. You know, Kai says whatever. It's like, okay. Look, you take you, Malphite ult on cooldown and then you figure it out well, when you, you can't I take mean, that one. Also, Alistar ult is busted on champions that are trying to fight. Sure. It's only ex like the only reason Alistar is allowed to have it is because he's supporting. Yeah, some poke so, there going on to five minutes. But really, I mean, so the thing is, so the the cooldown of when you can steal someone's ultimate is longer than your ultimate's cooldown on Silas. Yeah. So he's just gonna take Malphite every time he can, yep. and then the times he can't, he'll take Yone or Alistar. Yep. Right. Uh, but actually, even Kai'Sa isn't bad because yep. it lets him dive into the backline yep. really effectively. So we will see how that ends up going. I, mean, I, I think on I think on Silas in particular, Alistar is always unbelievable. Right. You yeah. get a cleanse, and then you just don't take any damage. Yep. And then you're healing up because, I mean, I. The, the the mystery of Silas to me is unending. Like the way that, <laughs> like how they ended up making him the way that they did is is crazy. It's a little bit of freeze here up in the top lane, going in the direction of Dawn this time rather than in the direction of Selenic. Yeah, but the direction not of too hard actually for the yeah. of, of the champions that are able to break the freeze. Renekton is quite good at doing so. Yep. Uh, so we will see Extramatic getting those soul stacks as Doubt is here for the lane gank. I guess I'm gonna have to remember that the mid laners are in the top lane and the top laners. Yes. I also would like to say we didn't talk about it here for a moment, but uh, it was a sub 310 clear. It was, that is correct. Uh, he was able to get that, that done. I didn't actually see what Rixie got it done in, but... Okay, about the same time as well uh, for Rixie, so a little bit faster, but right now, I mean, we're going to see a little bit of an advantage in the farm department here for the Udyr, as we did waste some time. Doubt did go top lane. But so far, nothing crazy happening around this game. Uh, definitely, yeah, a little bit weird to yeah. figure out who's in what lane. 
Line that well, all up. Dragon's about to spawn, and again, just like last game, NYU has... They're, they're up at Teleport always, and in addition to that, um, this time they don't have to worry about a shadow. Well, and no stay, yes, no stand United exactly, yeah. like you pointed out. And currently, currently NYU has bottom, bottom prior, so I imagine... Uh, you know, I think Doubt's just gonna waltz on over there and just take it. I, I, he'll, he'll solo it. He Sledge, you're so low. Oh my god. Yeah, Sledek is starting to bully this outfight. Okay, now they know where Udyr is, too. They might just start Look, it up right now. You see it, and here they go. Doubt and the bot lane of NYU moving towards this dragon immediately. It is a forced recall out of Flying Sledge. Rixie's still looking for some top lane, but there's nothing here to do. do. And this is going to be a very free first dragon for NYU, as we are going to see a teleport into the mid lane from Malphite, but yeah, just a really easy first dragon. Level 6 is available for Night's Dawn. Low-key parkour does not quite have the Dominus available, but it will be available quite soon as that wave stacks up into him, and he will make up a lot of that farm. So, so. you know, interesting thing about dragons on their own as opposed to what they do as a soul, I think the most powerful single one is probably Cloud, weirdly. Yeah, ultimate, um, ultimate ability haste. Yeah. But that one's pretty good. But mountain's very good, and mountain is incredible the moment you build any item that cares about it. Yeah. Um, you build a cloth armor? Yeah, that cloth yeah. armor? Actually, so here, here you go. You want yeah. the math on it? Here we go, hot Tell me. Cloth armor costs 300 gold. Uh huh. And when you have a single mountain drink, it is 331 gold of effective armor. Okay. With two mountain drinks, it becomes. 410 effective gold of man, armor. You really, so, you really are an LS. Man. I really am a, a color caster. I do my best around here. But you can see that it is, I mean, meaningful stats on yeah, just a couple of Absolutely. Things. It will not, of course, be a second one. We will only see the singular Mountain Drake in this game, as the way it works is the first two dragons are always different, and then the third is the Soul Dragon, as are all of the subsequent ones. The mid laners are back in the mid lane. You can see the pings coming out from the bottom side jungle of uh, Johns Hopkins. I think they're just going to leave. Doubt managed to pick himself up a blue buff for the low, low price of free. Yes, which actually, interestingly enough, is exactly enough CS to give him a one camp advantage, which he has made up on the Udyr. Yeah. So, Selenic now, we're seeing him jumping around on the Silas, whacking the rock with the chains. Not a lot. Now we see the Malphite already with the Cinder Hall completed, is able to stay a lot more healthy than in that early game. Lost chapters out as we're going to see Night Raven, a little bit of damage out of Loki Park. Night nice Dawn doing some... Nice Dawn. Yeah, yeah, Trying to get some, you know, damage down here, but uh, it doesn't really seem like he can do it. Selenic, you're going really, really low. The Malphite Malphite comes force. out, and that is it. The Unsolvable Force uh -oh. plus one auto. First Blood going over to Flying Sledge. Wow, so a big kill. We're going to see the all come in also and into Loki Parkour. Nice shot here. here. The ultimate and Loki Parkour, I think he's going to be able to get out, but Dominus. I don't know. They go under tower. Oh. The Dominus is not enough. And good uh, good aggro juggling there from Rixi. And unlike last game, we start off with a 2-0 in the direction of Johns Hopkins. Yeah, two quick kills here for Johns Hopkins. So good job. First Bloods for the Malphite, the solo kill, and a good gank from Rixi will set up Loki Parkour. And honestly... That's more than Rixie got done all of last game. That and that's really important for uh, the side of Johns Hopkins. Getting a little bit of confidence maybe back into the yeah. jungler and yeah. getting some pressure. So it will be the Yone picking up the kill. Big, big gold on to him. And it will be the 1.5k gold lead for Johns Hopkins here at about eight and a half minutes. But one dragon over for the side of NYU. NYU also looking for this Rift Herald. Although the jungler is in the area and they might not know that. So this could be a little bit risky. As of right now, no one on Johns Hopkins is Doesn't moving. Doesn't look like they know that it's happening. Well, and I, I think from, I mean, the, the, thing, thing, on his the way. thing that gives it away is that how you can see the Udyr coming to try and contest. Right now, his friends aren't there. Malphite is also is still down. I don't think they're going to be able to get there in time. I think that's just it. I think it's just down. Yep, and then you can see Doubt picking it up. Uh, the NYU. Alistar and the Yone thinking about going in there, but no ultimate from the Yone, so I think they decide against it. Down in the bot lane, this Senna here just gets the free farm. You know, this is actually the thing that if I'm John Hopkins, I'm the most scared about, is last game, this Senna was really problematic, and the Senna was down 20 farm or more most yep. of the game. Yep. Now, Senna is up almost 20 farm. It'll be a little bit. It'll be about 10 after this wave. Yep. And... That's, yeah, that's really kind of scary. The Senna could be really problematic this game. Well, and speaking of farm leads that are a little bit uh, deceptive, uh, in the jungle here, you see a six farm lead, but there's two more camps available. Yeah. Um, okay, so again, maybe going for some trading in the top lane. I don't know how much Selenic actually wants to be does doing does have that. the Unstoppable Force available now on both sides. Yeah, uh, that's correct. But 
What happens when an unstoppable force hits a unstoppable force? Uh, someone usually dies, is the answer. Actually, if they both ult at exactly the same time, because they're both unstoppable in terms of the game, they actually end up just switching places. Really? Yes. They do not. There is no collision. If you're in mid alt and Malphite alt, there's no collision with another Malphite alt, so they will just swap. Interesting. Yes. Extra what, what are some other questions we could ask like that? You know, if a uh, if a if a buff dies in the jungle and nobody clicks. Oh my God! Selenic oh. from downtown under Thank tower. Selenic, you're taking a lot of damage and has Force to the flash leave. away. Is Thank you, Selenic, for interrupting whatever the heck my co-commentator was talking about. Is it just me or did he look like he unstoppable forced from a way longer range than normal? Am I uh, crazy? I'm not, I, I, don't, I think it's just a little bit deceptive with the wall. Uh, okay. Well, now you can see going into fight, Sledge here does have the unstoppable force. And so low. He manages to just walk out. Tons of patience there. I don't know if that was worth it. Dominus pop. Dominus gets popped, but the Yone all comes in as well. And that is parkour just going down 0-2 wow. now with a farm advantage in the pocket of the Yone. And now Johns Hopkins just starting up this dragon. This one not looking that quite as hot for NYU. The one thing I'd like to point out too about the unstoppable force that we're talking about it so much is uh, with the AP scalings actually. So Silas taking that almost going to do a lot more damage. As we see a fight here, the Diamond's going to be in trouble. Nightdawn is doing a lot of damage and Waterfrog is going to get this kill as Doubt is going to be forced to run away with Dragon just being taken here for Johns Hopkins. So. Another kill over to the side of Johns Hopkins onto a crucial character in Kaisaw. The dragon plus the kill going to Johns Hopkins, and in the top lane, the only answer is a couple plates for Selenic. Yeah. Wow. So Johns Hopkins showing a lot more composure this game. I talked last game about how I was impressed with NYU taking advantage of some of these mistakes from Johns Hopkins. So far, Johns Hopkins hasn't really made any mistakes to take advantage of. And they are up here with the early 2000 gold lead and a crucial tie in Dragons. It will be the Infernal map for the second game in a row. And we will see how this continues to play out. But much, much better game for Cloud Hopkins so far. Well, despite Loki Parkour's faith in his, you know, Renekton counter pick here, he is down in CS. Yeah. And currently he's just getting bullied. Yeah. As Selenic is going to be the Rift Herald dropped and then given it should be the should be first tower, I believe, into the top lane. I imagine. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a whole lot Malphite can do about that unless there happens to be a wave in the way. Deweed here having to try and get out. It looks for a second layer that like there might be a skirmish breaking out of the bot lane. Actually, yeah, I don't think Shelly's gonna pop at all. Oh, it was no. dropped way too early. And Sledge here just gonna be able to pick it up, and that is that's really bad. Yeah, that's really, really, really bad. That was a lot of potential advantage that's been lost. Man, yeah, so NYU just a little bit sloppy here in the macro play. Uh, and so far, Johns Hopkins has been able to take advantage. Selenic taking a lot of damage, too. We do see the Kraken Slayer completed here for the setup. The first one to that mythic item is the AD carry, uh, which again is a little scary, but so far, not enough other stuff happening. Root really into taunt. Let's see some amount of poke into the Alistar. Ooh, the Alistar is so tanky. Damage back off for just a second here. The Alistar going under turret, and there is the Galliwall. Ooh, of the Alistar nice Galliwall. And Kaiman is just dead. I'm actually surprised they're not going to... Surprised nobody came to help and try to deal with the center. The Dominus coming out to put some damage down on the Night Song, but Night Song just kind of following up there. Uh, in the mid lane, we do see a bit of the skirmish breaking up, but also in the bottom lane, going down on a Water Frog, but Water Frog just walks under turret and gets away. Same thing with mid lane, full disengage. Looks like we're going to see resets across the board, and currently, as it stands, there's a 2,000 gold lead. For yeah, but gold on the exact person you wanted on if you're NYU here with that kill on the center. So. A little bit of a silver lining, as we're going to see the farm lead also extended here into the mid lane, about 10 farm lead. Not that crazy farm gap for Selenic. We saw last game actually the other way a little bit right now. And jungle is still pretty even, but Udyr 1-0-2 is a little bit scarier than he was last game. So we will see. Okay, and there is a pause. All right, so okay. we do have a little bit of a pause. How long is the pause going to be? Two minutes? Uh, yeah, we'll go to break here for just a moment. We have a bit of a pause. We'll be back in like two minutes here. Um, 
yeah, we'll see you all in just a moment. Um, no, it's a little bit abrupt, but we have some tech issues and we'll just address them real fast. We'll see you all in just a minute. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back on the Rift. Pause is over. I'd like to let everybody know who hasn't found this out before. If you pause over someone that is using a sweeper, it plays the audio the whole time. 
We just learned that. Um, did, I didn't know that, but there you go. Anyways, back in the game, for those who might have forgotten, things looking a little bit rough for NYU, certainly not out by... Still very close. Yeah, still very close, but, you know, a little bit rougher of a start as compared to the last game. Everfrost is going to be the mythic oh. choice for Selenic oh. here on Silas. I think that mythic's so cool. I'm sad that people don't build it enough. It's not good enough. Ah, okay. I okay, so just for the re for reference, uh, no, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. Um, yeah. That is the reason why we were paused. Uh, it is just with the, the spectator version, it, it's a little buggy uh, with the timing. Yep. But he is, in fact, here, as you can see by him moving around the map. Yep. In the bot lane here, they are crashing this in. I don't think they're gonna be able to deny it because the is right there. Do you have some cryo bot though for this next dragon? They do. Um, hmm. Yeah. What do you, okay, so what, what is what is is uh, is shield bow always the mythic of choice for uh, for Yeti? I think so. Okay. You love the life steal, especially. Yep. It's the same reason like on Yasuo, you know, you get one hit with your Q. Yeah. Uh, you get life steal on your Q, and when you are uh, diving into their team. That extra survivability is absolutely massive. Not to mention that the other stats are so good. So mid turret being the first one taken down here. Um, I believe that. Uh... Yeah, and that's actually I just like to say as well. That's first turret gold for the side of Johns Hopkins when it very easily probably should have been for NYU in that yeah. top lane. But however, there weren't any plates when that turret when that turret went down, which is right. a little nice. But it could have been three plates plus yeah. first turret, and yeah. that is a big chunk of gold yeah, and, and, and it, it wasn't hard for doubt to make that happen you just had to stay around and push in the way i agree um okay so we see the teleport coming in here from selenic both teams posturing around this crucial third dragon at one apiece i don't think they know that the alistar is where he is if he doesn't have hex flash he doesn't have hex flash he doesn't have hex flash what an l from this whoa alistar. okay but they still another the here he He's can go in and pop and that's what he is Dude, Yone going really, really deep here. The Dominus does come out, and so far the Sana is oh. alive and well, doing so much damage. Nightstalk's dead. Rixie's dead. Rixie is dead as well. There's no Water Frog's dead. Unfortunately, the unsolvable, everyone's dead. The unstoppable force went wide, and that will be the Alistar as well. A double kill onto oh. the Ice. A clean ace plus the dragon. Oh my God! So a beautiful engage, but the weed had so much ability in that fight and did a great job yep. of disengaging yep. and keeping the carry yep. safe. Yep. Extramatic survived at full health the whole time. Yep. Doubt with it, a beautiful unstoppable onslaught. I guess onslaught beats force in this case as the Malphite ult yep. did not connect at a huge crucial five for zero for NYU. They get the second dragon. They're onto this mid turret and, and they're all now of a sudden, on soul point point. All of a sudden, <laughs> yes, indeed, all of a sudden the game is tied up on gold. So. Really well, great it's, job it's tied up on gold, but I would actually say that, I mean, independent of the dragon, imagine if there wasn't a third dragon at all. Okay, there's another fight going on here. Rixie gets stunned down, and oh wow, the double rune just walks away. Um, what I was going to say is, it even if the third dragon didn't exist, I actually still think NYU's ahead right now, and the reason for that is that that goal is on the center. Yeah, this is a 3 and 3 Senna in 18 minutes. Let's do a soul check on this Senna, see how she's doing. Level 10, about... Uh, did that say 34? Yeah, a little low, a little low, low yeah. We'll still get to that 60 number, I hopefully, pretty soon. You want 60 by 11? Yeah, you do. Oh, yeah. All right, well, not the end of the world here. Um, yeah, I mean, Doubt in that fight played perfectly, as did, uh, as did uh, Extramatic. I mean, I would give that really the credit, though, to the weed in that fight. And Loki oh, Parkour yeah, also yeah. doing a really great job of using the Dominus and getting into that, that back line, so. Good fight, yeah, from NYU. Well, I mean, you know, they, they realized, look, that, you know, this is a great time to be playing, you know, front to back, even though it seems like it shouldn't be, right? Like, the way they've blown, the, the way that they've engaged, if we just let Senna sit where she is, not die in auto, we're gonna be fine. That's all we have to do. Absolutely. And uh, good recognize, uh, good job recognizing what they need to do in that fight there, and it, it pays off the face. Of course, it's gonna get this turret for free. I like, think so. Get uh, back off. He actually didn't need to because it was just the Alistar on the way. He doesn't know that though, but right? They didn't pass it. He does play, decide to play it safe, back off a little bit. Probably the right move. Uh, thank you to our production guy, to Steve there, for showing that that ward that's sitting there in the bottom lane actually did not notice Doubt uh, or uh, or Loki. But I mean, you know, now it does. I think they'll I think they'll figure out. All right, well, you know, where could Loki have gone? He was recalled, so you know. I don't know if they'll be able to do much with that right now. The map is on a bit of a mold state. There are camps right now for this new year to be farming. 
Um, so I think you know we're gonna we're gonna get to sit around here for just a moment. Uh, Mythics completed on uh, basically. Yeah. Everyone. So pretty standard mythic itemization here. Yeah. Everfrost is a little unusual, but still pretty it's good. Cool. Uh, Divine Sunderer, of course, is the item of choice always for Hecarim now. Gore Drinker is the Renekton item as usual. It will Two be Dark the, Souls stacks. Uh, oh, interesting. It will be the Kraken Slayer. Uh, and the Gwintu's actually finished already for oh, the, boy. the Senna. That is huge. Uh, let's look at the individual gold. I, mean, I would guess that this is... Ooh, okay, not as much as I expected, actually, in that bot lane. Uh, well, I mean, the, the reason is, you know, look at uh, look at Extramatic's farm, right? It's not, yeah. you know, it's... Not terrible, but it, it certainly certainly could be better. Yeah. So the big difference is here. We're seeing a tie in the, the top lane. About a thousand gold in the Udyr's pocket over the Hecarim. Eight hundred for the Yone. Uh, but crucially, eight hundred gold here for the Senna, which is contributing to having an extra completed item here. The question is going to be, I think, if Water Frog is yet a second completed item. Yeah. If not, the Senna is going to be a problem. Yep, it's on his Senna build. You think about Senna as this late game carry, but the two item spike for Senna is way bigger than it should be. It should be a lot well, and it's worth noting, I, I mean, I, I don't think that last fight was, you know, a lost cause or anything. Okay, but speaking of fights right now, you're seeing the Wii taking so much damage. Put that the Galio out. I actually like that a lot. I think that's I think that's a great solution. Yeah. Um, not that long ago, he'll have it back up for the dragon fight. Will he? I think so. Um, just about. Yeah. Um, but what I was gonna say is, you know, that last fight, that it wasn't like, it, I, it wasn't, it wasn't that that was, you know, somehow an impossible yeah, the fight. The difference for... between one item and two item Senna. Yeah. It's night and day. Yeah. But that being said, you know, if even for this for this fight, if uh, if if Johns Hopkins. Is a little bit more patient. I think if they play around there and gauge a little bit better, you know, this could be really, really scary. Because what happened was, is Pyman goes for a combo and it lands, right? And the, the, the and Night's Dawn got really deep, though. Yeah, but but the problem is, you know, the, the way that that could have gone better is, say Pyman lands the combo and then on top of the fourth. Yeah, I mean, then it's the The other thing, though, I'd like to point out that I think he's really interesting to fight is that the lead has completed. Yep. And Pyman doesn't. So yep. That's a lot of uh, effective HP for yep. his team that'll be available in this fight that is not going to be available on this side of Josh Hawkins. So NYU is going to look for this second, excuse me, third dragon for them. Get onto soul point if they can. Johns Hopkins is here. They are ready, but not two items for the Kaisa, not two items for the Yone, and they do have the two items on the Renekton and the Senna. So big item timings here that lock it as well for the Galio. Both taking their time to posture around this dragon at any moment could be the moment to go in. Right now, Senna really, really, really far back. The fight is breaking out. A beautiful two-man taunt. Unstoppable force going in, putting Wrong down a knockout. But currently, Extramatic is fine, but he can't actually get in. Oh, no, nice on misses and damage. Nice on missing abilities here. And now, Rixie is onto the Senna, but I don't think he's going to be able to get another taunt. Ooh. And there is the Unstoppable Onslaught. And currently, Doubt is just scaring them away. The health bars are so wow. low for John Hopkins. I think they just have to disengage here. There is a teleport available for the Malphite, but without Unstoppable Force, I think coming back doesn't do anything. Look at Loki Parkour, Extramatic Doubt, all full health here. Soletic too. So Honestly, really, really, really good fight there. John so Hopkins, patient. incredibly lucky that they got out of that with just the Alistar die. That is correct. That should have been a lot worse. And actually, Night Dawn might be in a little bit of trouble here as he's going to take the uh, Fate's Sealed back. Actually, no, I believe Fate's Sealed is the name of his ultimate ability. Uh, I don't know. They're all fate something, and I can yeah. never keep, them, keep track. But uh, okay, they got well, lucky there. Definitely, it's going to be soul point here for NYU, looking for that 28-minute soul. Uh, it is the infernal, which is huge. And after a shaky early game, NYU has started to take control of this game. Well, so you know, don't let this gold lead deceive you. In theory, they are down, in, but effective gold, they're just not down. They're and up about. Uh, so effective gold, each of these infernal dragons is going to be about an extra 800. So it's going to be total or for player? Uh, total. Total, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there you go. You know, that's it on its own. And then it did that, right? However, however, infernals have the same thing that mountains do, which is sure. as the game goes on, they get more effective. So yep. at two items, they're between 800 and 1,000 gold each per dragon. Uh, at three items, it's going to be closer to 1,800 per wow. dragon. So that will continue to be more and more effective gold and more and more effective damage. And I bet we can count on on seeing three items on at least the Senna by the next. Yeah, um, Senna is going to go for uh, what I think is the best build right now, which is the third item, Lord Dominic's Regards. Yep. Uh, it actually gives yep. 
uh, the same passive as a lot of other good items with that, but also the armor pen is really important. Yep. And the percent max health is so good right now. Senna actually, the way that- I mean, look at look at this team, right? Well, with the way that Senna actually works, that she has the base HP of an enchanter, not a marksman. Sure. And the reason that matters is that Kaisa and Yone are both gonna have higher percent max health than she is. Yep. Meaning that the Lord's Dominic passive is going to be a full efficacy against all five members of John Kaka. So why here oh, for all with Flying Sledge, but Flying Sledge does not take damage. Um, Ooh, actually, it does take some damage. Is that Chain, right? I, w I wonder if he might have actually gone on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, in addition here, right? Uh, again, NYU picked a, a comp that scales quite well with the exception of the Renekton. Um, and it seems like that's what they're most comfortable doing. We've seen that yeah. a lot this season. Yep. And why? I don't blame them. I mean, Extramatic looks so good on these scaling yep, carries. Yep. Selenic is so good on these scaling with the G top laners. Yep. Yeah, really well, good. And also, you know, when you pick that style, like Mystery Man said in the interview, when you have a when you have a jungler like Doubt who just wants to non-stop full clear, it's perfect. Yeah, it's exactly absolutely. What so yeah, very well coordinated here. And this, you know, after a shaky early game, the game's turning back in their favor again. So the thing they really have to be careful about NYU does is they need to keep Senna away from this unstoppable force. If they can do that, if they can keep Senna away from Malphite ult, then they have a really good shot in all these fights. But as soon as Senna takes one of those to the face, it's a whole different game. I mean, you know, there's there's plenty of disengage potential here for NYU. And I think in fights- I think Senna just dies though. So oh, unstoppable force. What, so, oh, oh, literally? Not literally, but like close enough. Well, so what I was gonna say is like, you know, your, your disengage potential you know, you have a lot of it, right? You know, weirdly, because uh, Silas's spells are like, you know, mini CCs, right? They root for a second, you know, and Doubt also has, you know, where he has access to CC and then, you know, Red Action can CC as well, and then so on and so forth, right? You're putting all of that into peeling your Senna. Right. That's it. Well, I mean, they, and they drafted a great comp for it. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, in addition, you can exploit positional advantages by your engage potential that you have here. But really, the truth is, you know, you need to avoid your Senna getting Alistar comboed, Yone ulted, or Unsolved. Yeah. If you can do that, you're going to win the fight. But that's not easy. Right. That requires Absolutely. a lot of coordination. But they've done a really good job so far. And yeah. They definitely have the potential. So, Soul Infernal Dragon is up in about one minute. Extramatic doing his best to farm up to this third item. Yep. I don't know if he's gonna quite get it. He is backing, so I'm guessing he does have oh, the yeah, Dominic he has finish. the cloak as, uh, as so well. He is going to have a huge third item here. There it the is. Dragon fight. Wow. And this is a really, really strong set. How many souls does this set I have? Take a look. Stay Bueller. He's like, so a okay. little low on little low, low, yeah. But still very, very strong here. Well, and also last fight has been encouraging for me um, because the way you saw the way that Extramatic played, he's like, look, where I'm standing, I can't do damage. I'm stand but that's Fallon okay. And, I'm standing in Fallon until Malphite all this. Exactly, right? You know, it's, it's better to not be doing anything than to just take damage. I thought, look, this is maybe the wrong guy here. Yeah, ends up going back. Actually gets a lot of damage under the weed. The weed is really quite low. We may have to back here, and that's actually not meaningless. You see here, Pyman going in, misses the combo, knocks him against the wall. Rixie here trying to get into the back lane. He's being oh, Fate Seal misses from Fate. Fate Seal. Huge taunt, but over on the other side of the fight, uh, we see that uh, somebody's just getting completely bullied out. Doubt here taking someone down. Pyman on such low HP. Waterfrog is taking down Deweed, and there oh. goes the sign of the Waterfrog will lose his life for it as well, and that is another kill going in the direction of NYU. I think for a second here, yeah, I think Sledge might be able to make it out, but I don't know. It matters. Let me correct myself. It doesn't matter. Yeah, Down and Selenic are both full HP. And, and that will be in first. That's going to be, and, and look at Rixie's health bar. Rixie is like barely half healthier, so he can't do anything. that's going to be Infernal full for NYU, and it was a little bit messy. They got cut off. They didn't really want to fight yet, but... Really still a great yep, job. Yep. Senna stayed alive just long enough to dish out yep. the damage that she needed to. And that is Infernal Soul. And all of a sudden, yes, you see the, the gold is about difference, but effective gold here, <laughs> about 5,000. And that's going to keep getting higher and higher from yep. a scaling perspective. Yep. And this game is really, really hard for John yeah, so, all you of a sudden. Like you said, out of all the single dragon buffs, Infernal scales the most. Yes. And you have three of them. Yep. 
Um, Not sure. to mention Infernal <laughs> Soul is very, yeah. very... Cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard that souls are pretty good these days. Yes. Um, do we now, doing exactly what you should be doing as a support, just locking down Vision around Baron? Yeah, Baron is up. Uh, I do think that NYU can probably just start pressuring it. Their team fight has gotten really good all of a sudden, and yeah. while they do have to be careful about the team fight of... I mean, you're approaching your third... Is, you're, they're, we're approaching a third item here on uh, Selenic. We've got double Sterics available uh, for both the Hecarim and the Loki part for Renekton. Renekton also almost done with Thornmail. That is going to be the direction of Doubt as well. As talked about the magic damage problem, and we're starting to see that be a problem again, yeah. where Malphite ult does magic damage. He does some damage as well, but, but it's you're not never really itemizing enough. a about him doing enough damage. And he doesn't. And right? so like, when this when the kills are on to Kaisa and Yone, Yone does have the, the hybrid damage from his passive, yep. but you can actually still itemize armor fairly fairly yep. effectively. Yep. And they're able to just stack up some of this armor and, well, and have and it be really, really good. The, the thing that's really important to note about the way that like you know about the way that you should really be thinking about having enough magic damage or having enough uh you know uh, uh physical damage is you need to make sure that the, the point is you need to make sure that the other team is incentivized to actually itemize to deal with it. Down here, going in, uh, manages to get a bit of a knockback onto late. it. But currently, you see they're going in so deep, and Pyman just completely caught Loki Park Four now on a killing spree. Uh, Selena goes oh my back. Oh god! In, in Selena back. just assassinated the Kaisa. Yeah, Kaisa is gone. That's two more kills going to the pocket of Renekton. I think what they're going to do here is. They're gonna push this in and think about Dragon and actually think it's another pick. They may just think about ending. It's a 5v2 right now. They, actually, they, they might just be able to end here. How long are the death times? I think they have the way. Left. I think this might just do it. This I think it's gonna be close. You can see they're really, really thinking about it. So, Cross goes wide, but Dow says, you know, I'm just gonna get Unstoppable onto the force tower. Is Unstoppable force is available. Okay, we had a bit of a mistake there. So, Lenny, you're doing a dead. dead. Selenic now has killed Iona. I think they're going to back off now. I don't know. I don't know if Alistar being alive is enough of the turn. Yone's dead for 45 more seconds. This is currently a 5v3, but you are in their base. You see Ooh, so the Selenic coming in. Really done. Going into the back line. Sledge is taking in so much damage. We may be dead, but we will see. The second turret fall. One, two turrets down. One, two games down. NYU takes the match against Johns Hopkins. Yeah, great Woo! job there from NYU. Phenomenal. I would just like to point out especially, huge shout out to the resiliency of NYU. Yeah. Had a rough early game, but they, instead of what we saw a couple of weeks before, where I think against, especially against Penn State, uh, they made a few mistakes and they let them sort of uh, snowball into bigger and bigger mistakes. Uh, what ends up happening this time instead is they just do a really, really good job of uh, being resilient, being patient, figuring out how to make the right macro plays. And they went from a dragon down to Infernal Soul yep. and winning the game. Yep. So really beautiful job there from NYU. Yep, yep, yep. Um... Game MVP. And then I have an opinion about series MVP. Uh... Game... Yeah, let's so, do it. So, okay, so game MVP, who are you going to I'm going to give that game MVP to Extramatic. Yeah, Extramatic. Extramatic on yeah. that setup. Okay, so really uh, we're going to talk for a little bit. We're going to we're going to talk for a little bit and then we're going to get Selenic. We're going to get Selenic in here. Yeah. Hello everybody. Welcome back to the bedroom studio. I'm still Hotfish. This is still Delta. I think uh, you know, as uh, as mentioned, we're going to have um Selenic in here in just a moment. So, a couple of things I'd like to talk about real quick. Uh NYU proving to three and one with a really honestly really impressive very mature 2-0 today Absolutely. i the way they played this 2-0 today uh makes me feel really good about nyu going forward yep. two more weeks left have to win both of them we don't know yet who we are playing we will know usually on wednesdays uh you can follow poly gaming network on twitter you can also join our discord and we will let you know when and where well i can tell you the when right now it will be 3 p.m eastern time on Saturday. That is correct. And we will be here to bring it to you. Really? Uh, really quickly, I'm not sure if uh, production, we're currently showing the answer. Okay. Okay, no uh, worries. Okay. What I will say though, as for player of the series, I have a bit of a controversial opinion. You're gonna say that. I'm going to say uh, the mystery ban for MVP. Okay. Because I genuinely think 
the biggest difference in these two games draft was draft. Yeah, I, I agree. The drafts were impeccable. We can't give it to Mystery Man. Why not? Because he's not a player. We make the rules. He's not a player. This is our thing. We can give it to whoever we want. I, we're not we're not giving it to Mystery I Man. would like to give a lot of shout outs to Mystery Man. Yeah, though. yeah. Uh, Look, that being said, draft. player of the series, uh, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got him. Yeah, we're, we're about to see Salonic. Yeah, player of the series here. Yeah. However, draft if man, draft if draft if really Great. really well done drafts here. Uh, okay, um, so yeah, in a moment here we'll have Selenic joining us. Um, oh. hello, hello, Selenic. I'm how here. has the how did the match feel, sir? Congratulations <laughs> on uh, us giving you player of the series. It was incredible to watch uh, game one. Oh, wow. Congratulations on a reward that we are bestowing yeah. on you right now. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> uh, congratulations. Much. Game one was an absolute mastery. You were just smurfing. Yeah. Um, and then game two as well, doing a great job of playing through what was going on. Uh, I assume you have the first question, Delta. You're hoping I do because you don't have one yet. I do, uh, but, but you can go. Uh, yeah. Hello. Uh, great job again. Uh, I w I'm curious. Uh, obviously, that Camille game uh, was, I mean, really just a master class in how to play Camille. Um, is that is this Camille Shen and like Camille into these these uh, I guess weak side top laners something that you feel really comfortable on? We've seen it a few times, and I'm just wondering if you could speak towards your uh, your ability and willingness to play that pick in these matches. Um, yeah, I'd say I'm pretty comfortable playing it. I played it a bunch. Shen can Shen can be a hard matchup, but uh, it's up to him to punish me because I'm the one that outscales in the end. Yeah, so. you, you did a great job with that of. Uh, that the freezes and everything, uh, you were up, I think, 60 farm at 20 minutes. Yeah. That's correct. Oh, wow. so, no, keeping track. Well, yeah, well, I, that's that's my job, not yours, right? You just need to pump <laughs> the numbers. Okay, uh, so the, uh, the the next question we have is the Riven got banned both games. Yeah. We were head scratching. We thought that is a waste of a ban, right? You know, it seems like Selenic has a big enough pool that targeting a Riven isn't worth your time. What do you think about that? Um, depending on the comp, I think Ribbon is pretty strong right now, so I would say it's not a complete waste, but, uh... If, you, if yeah, you had been, if you'd been allowed to pick the Ribbon game one, um, if, if you had the option of Ribbon or Camille game one, which would you have, uh, which would you have chose? Um, I think I would have played Camille. I think Camille was stronger in that game. Yeah. Got I mean, it. Camille just feels, uh, I mean, you play it, but Camille seems so good right now. Uh, just generally with the amount of mobility you have, uh, especially uh, you, you were able to make a couple of plays towards the mid lane. Um, but yeah, I mean, great game overall. I'm also wondering in these team fights, uh, both on the Camille, the first game, but also in the Silas, which you were able to to come back from a little bit of a rough laning phase. Um, it seems like you you really prioritize the, these uh, backline dives, uh, sometimes mostly for better, but occasionally for worse. And um that, that sort of dive style, uh, is that something that you guys have, like, intentionally chosen to do, or is that just how it's happened this these couple of games? Uh, I don't think we ever talked about, like, uh, diving back. Like, actually, in the second game, we were, actually, we were all saying protect AD, and well, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, for sure. with that. Yeah, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, I, just saw, I just saw the openings that uh, I saw and uh, went for them, pretty much. Gotcha. You know, a clutch Camille out onto the Lucian in the last fight in the first game. Absolutely, definitely helped win that one. Uh, how do you? Uh, this is this is maybe a bit of a bit of a broad question, and I can understand if you don't really want to answer. How have scrims been going? Let's Scrim? How is the team been feeling? Um, honestly, I I wasn't sure what to think up until this point because they've been going well some weeks and not so well in others, and uh, it's going a bit up and down. But yeah, I sure. think uh, we're slowly progressing, and uh, it's been getting better week by week. Sure. We'd agree. Uh, I was I was talking a little bit before we got on about how I felt that this was uh, your guys' most mature win of the year so far. Uh, it felt like the first game you just had total control, and the second game, despite the little bit of an early bit of uh, you know you're down a little bit early, did a really great job of playing the macro game and getting back into it. So three and one now, two more weeks left to go before playoffs. Uh, yeah, great great play today. I guess yeah. the, the last thing we'll say is, do you have anyone you want to? Any teammates you want to commend? Any say hi to your mom. Anything, anything else? else? Yes. Uh, hi, mom, and uh, mid gap. I think <laughs> <laughs> we love to hear it. Okay. Thank you so um, much. Uh, yeah, have, you, good luck next week. Good job. Give everyone our uh, congratulations for this yeah. week, and uh, we'll see you on the rift next week. Thanks, Lenik. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thanks for having me.
That was the NYU Violet top laner, Selenic, joining us in the broadcast. Player place. of the match. Player of the match, Selenic, uh, doing a great job on the Camille and the Silas. And honestly, we talked a little bit about it pre-match. Uh, just really, he's been so great on the weak side oh, yeah. all year. Absolutely. Doing a really good job on these picks and excited to see that continue yeah, I, going I mean, forward. He said, look, Doubt, if you want to just forget that my lane exists. And Doubt being cool. a juggler in he's, 2021 was yeah, like. He, what do you mean? Yeah, uh, are we having an uh, okay, I believe we had a bit of an audio problem there. What we were saying was, you know, congratulations, Selenic. We really appreciate the style of, you know, um, you know, he, he's he's had the approach of like, look, you know, jungler wants to, you know, pretend yeah. that my lane doesn't exist. That's fine. And, you know, doubt being a jungler in 2020 is like, what do you mean? What is a lane? I've, I've never heard of that. Yeah. So great play from them. Honestly, everybody's looked really solid. Uh, in in the way that we would say that it was well, mature. What I liked about game one was, I, I don't know if I would call game one clean. There were a lot of problems. There, there, there were a lot of moments where like, hey, I don't think you guys should have lost that fight. But macro-wise, yeah, though. But they kept composure. They, right? they had the good, they kept, they were they were good fights. Yeah, exactly. They might have lost them for, yeah. for more mechanical reasons, but they were the right fights. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing too is, uh, I would also just like to give a lot of respect to Loki Parkour for, he had some problems, I think, especially against Penn State, and we know about the, uh, vendetta uh, against Penn State, but yep. also I think some last week, uh, which you unfortunately were not here for, but against uh, uh, Lebanon Valley of wanting to make plays so badly that it's detrimental. And I felt like in this game, especially on the Lissandra, uh, yes, he was aggressive, but he was aggressive in this really controlled, really intentional way mm -hmm. that was correct. Like yep. he was making the right aggressive plays. And he has the mechanical ability, there is no doubt, to make any play he wants. But he has to choose the right ones. And he's done a really good job, I think, this this week of doing yeah, so. And also, you know, his team is on the same page. When right. I mean, the Renekton deep, you know, diving the backline plays yep. were calculated. Yep. They were with support from Galio. Yep. And they worked out. So really good job from him as well. Taking that aggression and channeling it into well, a really effective game. I've got um, one more point, and then I'll pass it to you. Uh, when you're support... You have to try so hard to get noticed, so I want to let the weed know. We love him, killing it. He's I mean, so good. Look, whether or not we've given to weed player, stop the giving to Galio. Stop yeah, giving yeah, to whether Galio. Whether or not we've given, you know, to weed player the games or anything. Like, when was the last time to weed made a mistake? Perfect. Like, He's, it's insane. Yeah, and, and honestly, uh, week five opponent. If you are watching this broadcast, uh, you should probably ban Galia. Uh, it's it's kind of broken. All right, do, do you have a last thing? Um. No, looking forward to next week. NYU right. three and one. NYU three and one. They have to win out from here, but yeah. we have no doubt that they'll be able to do just that. Thank you for tuning in. We will be back next week at 3 p.m. Eastern. You can find myself on Twitter at Museum Hotfish. You can find him at Jaden Rosard. And I've been Hotfish. I'm Delta. Thank you all so much. Have Bye -bye. a good day.